family and friends of the MIT graduating class of 2004. I am speaking to you up here at the head of the commencement stand. Uh, can you all see me? I'll wave. Hello. I think our picture is also on the, uh, the big television screen over there, the uh, Jumbotron. My name is Jay Kaiser, and I'm uh, an emeritus professor at MIT. And uh, this is what emeritus professors do. We entertain you until your graduates come into this beautiful court. I'm joined by my colleague, Warren Siemens, who for 32 years was associated with MIT, and known most of all as director of the MIT Museum. There's no one at MIT who knows more about MIT lore and history than Warren. We will be visiting with you for the next hour or so as we await the arrival of the guests of honor, your children. They are currently gathering in the Johnson Athletic Center on the west side of the campus, and they should be joining us at about 9.50. If you take a look at the screen, you can see them over in the Johnson Athletic Center now through the magic of television. It is now 8.18. Please synchronize your watches. During this time, we will also have some video pieces to show, so make sure that you have a good view of the screen, and we'll share with you a variety of perspectives of the MIT experience that the students had when they were here. This is a gorgeous day. Rarely has there been a day when I could say, look up in the sky and you will not see a cloud. It's amazing. We have really been blessed with this beautiful day, and it's a beautiful day for, for us and for you. We've been dodging rain. It rained yesterday, it rained the day before, but no rain today. And that makes this commencement setting a special one. The court has a rich, rich and interesting history, and as I said, there are a few people who know more about that history than my colleague Warren Siemens will tell you a little bit about the place you're now sitting in. Warren? Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's a great pleasure for me to be here again this year. Uh, I think it's important to know a little bit about this holy uh, center of MIT. 88 years ago, 1916, this de was dedicated when this new campus was uh, built and dedicated. June of 1916. Since that time, it has served as really the Institute's public living room. Everything from graduation, commencement ceremonies, through the inauguration of new presidents, to uh, a lot of social activities, some of which you will see on our video screens today. Over the years, it has served as a um, meeting place. Most over the, traditionally over the history of the place, the first actual meeting of the freshman class coming in was held here in, was known as the Great Court. In 1974, it was renamed Killian Court after James Ryan Killian, who had just re, uh, stepped down as chairman of the MIT Corporation. This has served in many other ways as a center for, um, MIT life. In 1930, June 6th of 1930, Carl Compton uh, was inaugurated president in this uh, locale. At that day, in comparison to today, it was 106 here in the, um, in the Killian Court. The, uh, it's also interesting to note that at least the ashes of at least two MIT presidents have been sprinkled or spread into the great court. So it is truly a significant center of MIT. I thought it'd be interesting, since we are here, to take a look at the object that's directly behind us on the speaker's podium, 
That's the great seal of MIT. You will notice for looking at it that it has a lot of significance to uh, the group meeting today. This is 1861 is the day of the actual signing of the MIT Charter. That would be 134 years, 33 years ago, 143 years ago. And uh, this has been uh, always part of the MIT uh, story. Over the years, they've tried to upgrade it, to change it, but it always comes back to the use of the original uh, MIT seal. Mens et manus, mind and hand, are uh, opposed to the science and art, the artist and the scientist. And science and arts are repeated on the chapters, uh, on the spines of the books that are on the mantle of learning. So this, uh, you'll get an idea of this. You'll see this used in a lot of other places. With that, I'll turn back to Jay. If you look behind you, you'll see a glorious uh, cityscape. It's one of the most beautiful, I think, in the United States. And so be sure you take a, a moment at some time to look at the cities, uh, the view of the city from uh, the Killian Court here. In the uh, beginning when MIT was designed, I believe this court actually went all the way down to the river and you could actually dock at the end there. Now, of course, Memorial Drive is a major uh, thoroughfare. Well, as Warren said, the ashes of two presidents have been scattered here. So I'd like to ask you to be careful where you walk. And while you're doing that, we're going to roll our first tape. This court provides many activities a place for many activities at MIT, and occasionally it's used as a flight test site for a robotic helicopter developed by students at MIT. If you'll take a look at the Jumbotron, we'll show you a video of what that looked like. This project is uh, to demonstrate automated acrobatic maneuvering yes, uh, for an aerial vehicle. In the Killian Court, we, we have done a flight in so-called control augmentation system, where the pilot gives uh, very high-level commands. For example, go forward, or go sideways, or turn, so we go down slightly down. higher, slightly lower. The pilot doesn't have to take care of stabilization of the system. That, that's done by automatic control system. The vehicle we did not work on. We purchased a vehicle directly from uh, a miniature aircraft. Nice. Uh, we picked this machine because it's very cheap, it's uh, mass manufactured, and uh, we, can, uh, we could outfit it with our own electronics very quickly. So this is our ground station. It's a very old laptop, uh, about three years old. Um, it runs a real-time operating system, and it gets the data from the helicopter uh, about the sensors and the, the state uh, attitude, velocities, altitude, and everything else. And the ground station operator monitors that all of the sensors are doing fine. And then we take all this data, we analyze it, we record the trajectories um, of uh, acrobatic maneuvers that Raja has performed, and uh, we design the controllers that follow this trajectory. So what happens is uh, we use uh, uh, filtering technologies in order to synthesize this information into a complete and accurate estimate of where the helicopter is and what it's doing. Uh, previously, um, small rotorcraft and large rotorcraft as well uh, have been, well, when they were flown autonomously, have been flying very non-aggressive trajectories. <coughs> and what we have contributed uh, is autonomous aggressive maneuvering. So we were able to design the control laws that allow us to perform an aerobatic maneuver completely hands-off. The applications could include uh, news gathering, gathering uh, so uh, gathering uh, video footage of hard-to-explore areas, top of mountains, top of volcanoes, 
fire situations, any environment where the, uh, uh, which is uh, very uh, complicated, very contrived, and they would require very agile maneuvers and very agile machines to operate. Uh, you can also use it for a number of other applications, for example, urban surveillance and pursuit. Uh, there is an aesthetic component to our research, which is to make such machines as graceful as possible. What we would want is that this machine eventually behaves and flies as well, if not better, than an, a bird. Uh, that tape that you just saw was um, the work of Eric Ferrand, and his office is in the uh, new MIT Status Center. Hi. And uh, I met him recently. That's one of the great things about the center, you know, it's very easy for people to meet one another. And one of the things that the tape didn't show you was that Eric has this ability to write backwards. He can write backwards with either hand. Now, you might say, what good is that ability? Well, his office has a glass door, and if you write backwards on the inside, you can read it right side up on the other side. And so that's what he does. He wrote his name and his office backwards on, uh, in the status center. The students being honored today have been at MIT during a period of unprecedented growth in our student life and learning programs, resulting in the construction of new dorms, new classrooms, and a beautiful new athletic center. For people like Warren and me, who have been at MIT for, well, 30, 40 years, MIT is really taking on a completely new look, and we hope you'll get a chance to, to, uh, to enjoy that. The new dormitories, the new athletic center, even the Stata Center itself has just opened up. It all gives, it just, MIT doesn't look the same anymore. Uh, we recently produced a series of short video retrospectives where students talk about the MIT experience outside of their classrooms and laboratories. 
And if you watch the uh, humongous tron behind us, uh, you'll catch a glimpse. Uh, you may catch a glimpse of one of your children. So here we go. There's clubs for everything, and people are doing it, and MIT gives them money for it, and there's so much to do here, which I did not think. I thought everybody would just be holed away in their lab somewhere. MIT has a, a whole diverse group of opportunities for you to kind of follow, and, and you can easily transition from one to another. The expectations of today's students are different. They expect more of their universities than I think the generation of students maybe 20 or 30 years ago. They expect their universities to provide a range of services and opportunities, which many universities didn't provide 30 years ago when I came here. I think it helps keep them sharp. I think it contributes to the mental health. It's a great way to blow off steam from the, cla the intense classroom experience and then the sheer intensity of the place. That hasn't changed either. In fact, if anything, it's more intense. So I think it's just a key to, to leading a, a very well-balanced life. And uh, gee, they have a lot of interest nowadays, too. A lot of students who come to MIT were very involved in things in high school. I held several leadership positions in some clubs. and. I wanted to continue that while I was here because for me learning isn't just about doing the curricular aspect of things, like just learning biology or learning about cells. It's about learning how to be a leader, how to be a better person um, through activities that you're in. And you gain a lot of skills from working with people and learning from people as well. Mr. Worthing and I are engaged to be married. Paul and me. Because MIT did have all of it, um, I definitely thought that it, it was the place for me. We've come to understand that the full experience for the student really needs to have this sense of community. And the community means what happens in residential groups, what happens in sports, both intramural and formal sports events and collegiate sports events, what happens in music groups, what happens day to day uh, as students work with each other and with the faculty. There are only so many things you can learn in the classroom and you know I've been here for, for three and a half years now. and. Uh, Definitely the most I've gotten out of my college experience has not been things I've learned in the classroom. It's definitely been the opportunities I've had outside of it. These are going to be the future leaders. Someone who is able to, to do the work at MIT and who are top level athletes, musicians, drama stars, you know, whatever, whatever their, their passion is, we want to find the best. And uh, it, it's not mutually exclusive with the academics. Don't you lose your head. It's been something that's given me a lot personally, and I feel something that's going to give a lot back to the community at MIT and the rest of the world uh, in the future. I think the current MIT student comes out and sees a much wider range of opportunities. They will lead companies. They will lead groups within companies. They will go to government and nonprofit organizations. And all the skills they acquire, not just in the classroom, but in the full community life of being an MIT student will be of tremendous value to them. Yes, we are the Yep. All right. This is the part of the program where we'd like to meet some of you. And we thought it might be fun to talk to those of you who have come from the farthest distance. So if you think you've come the longest distance for this graduation, come up to us. We're standing right over here by the screen. You can all see me. Come up and we'll talk to you about where you're from. So those of you who have come the longest distance. Now remember, longest distance is not London. That's just, I mean, London, you know, just a, around the corner and, and not Hoboken. Hoboken just seems far. Ah, here's somebody. Good. You hang. 
And let's have some others. If you think you've come the longest distance, please come here. In the meantime, let's check in on see how the students are doing over in the Johnson Athletic Center. Hi, can you hear me over there? Can you can hear me? Yes. Uh, can we uh, work on the sound there? Because I can't quite hear you. Mike, they can't hear me. You want me to go louder? Yeah, that's good. Move the microphone closer to now. All righty. That's good. What's your name? J.K. And J.K.? Yep. That's my initials, J. Kaiser. <laughs> uh, where are you from, J.K.? I'm from I'm India, from but I grew up in the Middle East. And where did you grow up? In Muscat, the Sultanate of Oman. So, how many languages do you speak? Fluently, or languages I assume I speak? Languages in which you could conduct a conversation? Four. And what are they? English, Hindi, Tamil, Telugu, Kannada. Amazing. That's wonderful. What did you major in? What was your major? Aero Astro. And uh, do you have a job? Yep, I'm on staff at MIT. <laughs> wow. Do you have a place to live? Yep, 1010 where? Mass Ave. My folks are in the audience right now. Where are your folks? Raise your hand. Are your folks here? Yep. Where are they? I can't. Boy, you've got a lot of folks. <laughs> where are oh, there they are. JK, they're waiting for you. I know, I know. Hang on, let me introduce you to some people who are here. Terrific, please. I am Jakob Pretorius from South Africa. Just sit there. Uh, Johannesburg. I've been to Johannesburg. Oh, he has? Yeah, where do you, uh, uh, let's see, Jacaranda, that's right. Jacaranda trees. Yeah, yeah very this nice. Now, but Pretoria me. is actually the city for Jacaranda trees. Yeah, I've been to Pretoria too. Nice town. Uh, what is, your name is what, Jakob? Yes. And is your, are your parents here? Uh, they should be there. My wife should be on stage, too. You're married? How yes. old are you? You look like you're 16. I'm not, uh, prepared to disclose that information right now, thanks. <laughs> uh, I don't blame you. All right, it's nice talking to you guys. We'll come back to you in a few minutes, but we're going to roll another tape over here to entertain your parents. All right, cheers. Take care. See you, JK. When the class of 2004 were sophomores, a good number of them took MIT's renowned engineering course, 2007. This is the much emulated course where students design, engineer, and build a machine that accomplishes a specific task. All this hard work culminates in an end of semester contest, which is the big event at MIT. At this contest, students compete head to head in MIT's most exciting spectator sport. We offer you a look at some of the participants and their clever machines. You might recognize your graduate as they appeared when they were hard at work as sophomores. 2007. Two, one, go! It's time again for the granddaddy of all the student engineering contests, the annual battle of machines built by sophomores in MIT. Now comes the bomb part, calling my mom. This year's contest, hatched six months earlier, involves a teeter-totter beam and a swinging eight-pound ball. The challenge is to build a machine that starts out sitting on the beam, 
and that after exactly 45 seconds has managed to tilt its side of the beam down, working against an opponent trying to do the same thing. There's a 10 pound weight limit for each machine and a box of parts to make it from. There are a bunch of uh, structural materials that they can... Each of the 100 plus students in the contest, which is actually a course in mechanical engineering, gets an identical kit of stuff, including several electric motors from home power tools, as well as things that seem like mechanical leftovers. What would you do with this? Nobody in the class knows what that is. <laughs> <laughs> we had a... Is that true? You, nobody, you, don't, you don't know what this is? But no one knows how they're going to use it. Usually people just do this, pop it in, take the motor, and do something with the motor, and then uh, toss that back in there. Uh, it, what it is good it for is... It is a mistake uh, to toss that away. <laughs> <laughs> After several weeks of brainstorming and designing their machines on paper and computer, the class sets to work manufacturing them. After 14 weeks of design, construction, and testing, the machines faced one last hurdle. Put it in the box however you can get it in. Yeah. To qualify for the contest, every machine must fit within the box its parts came in. Right, that goes straight? Yeah. There. Nice. All right. Put the lid on, please. Before an expectant crowd in MIT's ice hockey arena, Two, one, go! Nick Martin's machine, flawless in tests, doesn't give him his money's worth. It fell over. Um, that was kind of depressing. I'd never seen that before. You know, I tested it, ran it, but, you know, I guess that's what engineering's all about. You know? The first semifinal. And now it's Will Lark's turn to face Will Delhagen's Jack. Almost before the car has even jumped off the beam, the jack is hoisting it up. All Will Delhagen has to do is stand by and watch as Will Lark's car desperately tries to hook around the jack and yank it away. For Will Lark, it's the end of a great run. The only way I could have gotten him was trying to mess him up, so. Great idea. Go! The second semifinal. It's Alex Jacobson's mobile jack against a simple extender that has quietly made it through round after round. For a moment, it looks like Alex has gotten trapped by the corner. But then... So for the finals, it's mobile jack against mobile jack. There's a lot of things I like, didn't get done that I wanted to get done, but everything I needed, I guess, I finished, so. We tracked Alex down behind the scenes, where it turned out he'd been conspiring with Will. Good friends who have been comparing notes ever since the class began. Will and Alex now plan a final collaboration. Carefully choreographed, the two robots jack the whole apparatus an inch off the ground with the beam dead level. The result is a tie. Or in MIT speak, a double win. This has never ever happened before, and we're so happy it did because we like doing things different. Scientific American Theory. The clip you've just seen is credited to scientists American Frontiers. The 207 contest remains MIT's most widely attended spectator event, but a lack of spectators did not prevent MIT students from participating in athletics. In fact, it is not widely known, but MIT fields more NCAA athletic teams than any other school in the country, with the possible exception of that other school up the river. Also, as this video illustrates, MIT students don't sit in the stands, they participate.
MIT sponsors a uniquely expansive athletic department which features 25 intercollegiate sports, 40 club sport offerings, and 42 intercollegiate athletic programs. Athletics are part of this notion of building a community and building a complete individual's education. I certainly feel more well-rounded because of it. I feel that I've had the chance to excel in different aspects of my life. MIT has the largest number of academic All-Americas in the country with 114 since the program began in 1980. I think it showcases that our kids are doing exceptionally well in the classroom as well as on the field. At the beginning of each season, the football coach says, gentlemen, the first priority for you is going to be your academics. The second priority is going to be football. And if your list doesn't look like this, then you shouldn't be in this room. Nearly 60% of our undergraduates compete in organized sports at some level on campus. It's a good thing because I met a lot of people that I wouldn't have met otherwise, who I would see afterwards. And I'm like, oh, are you on my IM team? So how's it going? How's your research? They don't exist for themselves, they don't exist for the alumni to make the alumni feel good. We have them because they're part of the educational experience. The crew boat itself, the 70-foot boat, is a micromanage system in and of itself. You've got the administrator, your coxswain, and then you've got your powerhouse, you've got your stroke, who is your leader of your powerhouse. And then you've got your four and five seats, who are the peak of your boat. And then you've got your bow, who kind of guides you along in the little directions left and right. And so together, you work as a team to the common goal. They learn incredible amounts about leadership, teamwork, sportsmanship, and courage, the willingness to take risks and push their abilities beyond what they think they can achieve. I have learned to push myself during races and during practices so hard and commit myself to a certain goal unequivocally and in a way that I never had before. The MIT I knew in the 60s and early 70s had a proper emphasis on athletics and a tremendous diversity of sports and really emphasized participation. That part hasn't changed. But what's happened is there's an even greater variety of sports today. If MIT doesn't have something, be it a club or an organization or a sport, if two people want to do it, they'll let you organize it and you can have it. It's up to the individual, but the MIT will embrace that. It always has been in the past and always will be about opportunity for all. One of the things that I think is particularly striking about the athletic program at MIT is the emphasis on participation in sports rather than spectator sports. You don't see the whole campus coming out to watch the football game on a Saturday afternoon like you might find on some college campuses, but you do see an incredible number of students that are engaged. Currently, about 20% of the students are involved in a varsity sport. About 80% of the students are involved in intramural sports and 100% of the undergraduates are involved in the physical education program. So it really lets students pursue their interests, whether they pursued them as a, an extracurricular activity through their school previously or whether it's something brand new. We've been able to make major investments in facilities and support services that have enhanced an already vital program. The biggest single change has been the opening of the Zizigger Center. The Z Center, that thing is just beautiful, man. It just seemed like the MIT campus became healthier because people were more willing to work out because there were more facilities and they were nicer. The new facilities have been made possible because there was a vision on the part of MIT, but then the facilities could not have been created without the financial support of the alums who have come forth to say, yes, we recognize that that is an important priority and we want to be able to support it. You'll be in there lifting weights and your professor will be in there lifting weights also or something and say hi to them and just little things like that, seeing people outside of the classroom 
and interacting not in an academic way, I think really helps build the community. It's not just about the classroom or just about the laboratory, but it's about growing as a person. And part of that is working with other students or participating in sports or other sort of events, the arts, all of which will carry forward into their future lives. If you count Europe and Asia as a single continent, there are six continents in the world, and we have three of them represented here. We have the man who has come the farthest from Perth, Australia, is Tan. Raise your hand, Tan. He spent, what, uh, 25 hours on the plane? 25 hours flying times from Perth to Boston. And you have, uh, how many children are graduating? I got one, one child who's graduating now, yep, and she's in the, in the Sloan School of Management. Sloan School of Management. And the next farthest, uh, comes from Bombay, India. Her name is Amita Parekh. Hi. One, he's graduating from the Sloan School of Management, and I'm very proud. Two continents, one graduate school. Our next comes from Buenos Aires, Argentina, Hugo Batagés. My child is Alexander Batalis, and uh, he's a great in economics. In economics. economics. And is he going to go back to Buenos Aires? No, I think he thinks to continue studying in the school. Very good. And then finally, from Beirut, Lebanon, Michelle and Patricia Napti. Hello. Yes, our daughter is Jumana Napti, and she's getting two masters, one in urban planning, one in transportation. That's wonderful. So tell me, Tan, since you've come the farthest, is this your first time you've been to the United States? No, I've been here a few times, and I like America. <laughs> well, that's a relief. <laughs> it's good to hear that. Uh, I like Australia. <laughs> and uh, Hugo, is this your first time? No, I came many times. Uh, actually, I was I married with an American woman. And we got three kids, two born in Buenos Aires and one born in the States. And what do you do? I have an in, uh, uh, industry. I make fire extinguishers in Argentina. You make fire extinguishers? Would you give the people here a deal? <laughs> Hugo says, if there's anybody out there who needs a fire extinguisher, see him. <laughs> Tan, what do you do? I'm a businessman. I make cakes. You make what? Cheesecakes. All right. Now, Tan is a friend of mine. He's my friend, too. And what about you? What do you do? I work in a bank in India, a private bank. I've just changed allegiances. <laughs> and Michelle and uh, Patricia, what do you do? Yes, well, I established a volunteer center for the country of Lebanon. So in the last six years, that's what I've been doing. You? Uh, I spent a career at the Hoover Institution on War, Revolution, and Peace at Stanford University as Middle East Area Specialist. So your area of specialty is Middle East. So it's your fault. Yes. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do here is break out a little cheesecake and uh, break out a little fire extinguisher and uh, have fun. Thank you very much, folks. It's really been marvelous. Okay, we've got this. Uh, we've got the people come. All right, now I w oh, we have somebody else here. Oh, where are you from? I'm coming from Chennai. India. India. And I'm mother of JK, who just spoke. Well, is, is uh, Chennai farther than Bombay? Yes. <laughs> JK, your parents are here, and they want to know what you're up to. Thank you very much, folks. It's really been wonderful.
Thank you very much. Let's give them a big hand. Hang on. He's got two. Hang on just a second. Now then, I would like to invite all those families who have the most MIT degrees back to back. In other words, if you have a child and you went to MIT and your grandfather went to MIT and your great grandfather, come on up. In the meantime, Killian Court is not only the setting for MIT's grand commencement ceremony, but it's a favorite setting for relaxation and recreation. This is something very special. Killian Court has also become a preferred hunting ground for MIT's resident red-tailed hawks. Apparently, a number of nesting pairs of hawks have decided, as many of you did four years ago, that MIT is a great environment for maturation and learning. We recently had the pleasure due to their choice of nest location, to witness up close a four-week process in which two down-covered chicks grew into fledgings that left the nest just last week. We offer this retrospect as we wait for your prospective fledglings to arrive. Take a look at the humongous tron. These baby chicks were hatched on April 9th in a tree just across the street from the student center. During the week of April 19th, MIT's in-house video production department set up a video camera and shared these images 24-7 throughout the institute via MIT's cable TV system. The following week, we began sharing the development of these chicks with the world via a 12-hour per day webcast. We were amazed at how quickly they grew. Many viewers wrote to tell us that they had detected visible growth within a single day. Not unlike the graduates we honor today, when they were just babies, the single mission of these youngsters was to be fed and to sleep. The parent hawks constantly doted on the chicks, delivering a non-stop assortment of Cambridge area prey. Their first tentative steps resulted in the inevitable stumble and header. The parent hawks continued to fortify the nest as the babies grew. These chicks also experience some of the same character building New England weather that your children have been exposed to these past years. At different times, the outstretched wings of the mother protected the babies from a two inch dusting of snow or from several downpours. And through it all, the chicks ate and grew and ate some more. During their sophomore period, the down gave way in places to feathers and the now juveniles became more adventurous. More aggressive attempts at negotiating the nest earned similar results, a faceplant. But as the footing became sure and the balance improved, it was time to stretch those wings and exercise those muscles. Now, as juniors, these students were learning as much as they could handle. Mother explained that the food they ate didn't just grow on trees. Lessons were provided in the value of the hunt and as the last bits of down were preened away and feathers continued to grow, the youngsters enthusiastically tested their abilities at defying gravity. As is usually the case, one of the siblings was far more the risk taker, the trailblazer. Though only separated by perhaps a day at birth, it was clear that one of the siblings was far more anxious to explore life outside the nest. Finally, graduation week had arrived. And just a week ago, Tuesday, the more precocious sibling, whom we named Kitty Hawk, jumped from the nest and glided safely to the other side of Mass Ave, landing on a bicycle rack in front of the student center. MIT campus police, aided by a number of onlookers, secured the area while the fledgling practiced takeoffs and landings by flying from handlebar to handlebar. Over the next few hours, Kitty Hawk made its way, seemingly a branch at a time, up a nearby evergreen to an elevation where it gained enough confidence to attempt a return flight back to the nest, encouraged by cries from its mother. Kitty Hawk provided encouragement to the less daring sibling, Mitzi, also known as Chicken Hawk. But Mitzi wasn't quite ready. Days passed and Mitzi, although the spirit seemed willing, couldn't bring himself to venture beyond the nest. We speculated 
that yet another torrential downpour might provide the necessary incentive, but Mitzi toughed it out. Food continued to be provided, and he now had a room all to himself. Why leave? Parental and sibling encouragement continued to where last Friday, Mitzi jumped, flew to the highest point in the tree, and looked like he was ready. A gust of wind and a flurry of wings, and the less than gracious hawk stumbled downward. Luckily landing in the nest below. Failure breeds success, and Mitzi undoubtedly learned from that failed attempt. The very next morning, Saturday, 5 a.m., Mitzi took his maiden flight. Perhaps he was waiting for a smaller audience or for the sun to finally shine, but later that day, he and Kitty Hawk were spotted together on the highest ledge of the student center and have since been spotted on ledges and windowsills throughout the Institute. You may even see them flying about today. This is indeed a place where the young learn while they mature and test their limits and learn from their mistakes and finally leave with confidence and a sense of great accomplishment to stretch their wings and explore new horizons where possibilities are boundless. We wish them the very best. Right now, we're going to go back over to the um, Johnson Athletic Center to interview your uh, children and uh, see who we've got. So take a look at the screen, and I'll see who I can see. Who have you got over there? How are you doing? Pretty good. What's your name? My name is Kenny Lee. I'm a uh, class of 04 Sloan School. Oh, yeah. OK, Kenny. These Everybody's Sloan School. Uh, and tell me. Uh, in, who are the people around you? These are my best friends at MIT. I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Yeah, please do. <laughs> my name is Megan Goldman. I'm class of 2004 undergraduate. Mark Kim, class of 2004 MBA. Shout out to all those on the West Coast. Let's hear a cheer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm Katie Butler. I'm a MN's EECS of 2004. Woo! Nice. Hi, I'm Mandy Mobley, class of 2004 Sloan. Hi, Mom, Dad, Scotty, Man Kelly, Molly. Hi, my name's David Lee, class 2004 at Sloan from Fairfax, Virginia. What's up, Mom, Dad? So tell me, uh, now, the, yeah, the, what's your name again? Tell me. Kenny. Kenny, uh, th did you meet all of these guys at MIT? Uh, you're a Sloan school, right? That's correct. Did they all live with you? Or um, were you in the same dorm? Uh, Part of the, they want to know if we were all in the same dorm, did we live together? Nope. <laughs> so there, there's a few of us from the Sloan School here. We all took the same classes, lived in the MIT graduate dorms. Where Some of us live off campus. I'm at uh, Sydney Pacific. Hi, Mom and Dad and Dan and Donnie. <laughs> and tell me, will you guys, do you think you'll be able to keep contact with one another after you've graduated? Oh, I definitely think we'll be able to stay in contact. I think one of, the, one of the big things from MIT that I think I'll take was the network and all the great friends we've made while we've been here. How about the others? What do you think? Absolutely. The friendships will definitely last a lifetime. That's marvelous. We'll definitely stay in touch, mostly because a lot of people are moving to California like me. Yeah. I think the great thing about MIT are all the great people that you meet, so definitely stay in touch. A lot of these people will be uh, my lifelong friends, especially uh, Megan and Katie here. <laughs> all right. Yes, it's been very nice meeting Mark today. <laughs> all right. But um, definitely we'll stay in touch with all of my friends. Okay, uh, Kenny? Yeah, go ahead. I want you to, on, on three, I'd like you to have you and all of your friends wave to all of their friends and parents here in Killian Court. One. You know, well, actually, can I just interrupt? We've been working on a move for the past three days. Excellent. Let's do it. This. Do so it. You, on, on the count of three, we're going to do our move. Is everyone ready? Everybody, look at the screen. We're kind of limbered up here. All right, you give us the count. A one. One. Two. two three. Three. Hey. <laughs> Great, Kenny. That's the MIT wave. Thank you.
Wow, that looks like they're having a very good time over there. I wonder if they'll ever come over here. Uh, MIT has just recently celebrated the completion of the long-awaited Ray and Maria Stata Center, a Frank Gehry design building that is the home to the computer science and artificial intelligence laboratories, the lab for information and design systems, and the departments of linguistics and philosophy. I'm a member of the department of linguistics and philosophy, and I have an office in this state of building. If you haven't seen it, you must go see it. It's on Vassar Street, and it's that very odd-shaped looking building. It, none of the lines are straight up and down. They're all sort of at an angles. In fact, the worst fear of the architect is that there will be an earthquake and straighten the building. So we're going to see a videotape that's going to compress into a few moments the uh, building of this remarkable edifice. I'm sure that the the legacy of the great accomplishments that were born in Building 20 that you've all heard about here today uh, are going to be preserved and extended and enhanced uh, in this new space that will replace uh, that time-honored building. We are thrilled that we will be able to move there and our generations of students and researchers to come will be able to continue to innovate and help us lead better lives. This piece of land in this part of the campus will mark the information science, cognitive science, and biology parts that will drive much of our economy and much of our knowledge in this next century. We have the best faculty and the best students, and soon they will have the group of buildings of the quality they deserve. This is also a building that pushes the edge of design and construction technology. It's a building that was built uh, entirely from a three-dimensional digital model. One of the things that we really wanted from the start was room to think. And this literally gives us plenty of room to think. There's light, there's air. It's like an ecosystem. It has everything we need. I love it. It's like living in a diorama. It's made me use my imagination. And I think that's what it's all about. The transition from the inside world to the outside world is gradual. And there seems to be a union between the inside and the outside. Just amazing space, amazing space. You see, we have the two floors here, the first floor, the second floor. Each lab is organized that way. The spaces are really original, and I really like the fact that a lot of the neighborhood are organized around open spaces that really encourage collaboration and informal meeting, just bumping into each other. I thought it was uh, rather traditional. I love the fact that I don't have to go outside to get to the main campus. I was really excited to see how beautiful the space is. It's really just these lofted ceilings and a lot of community areas. There was always a community but it was a community in spite of the architecture. Here we have a community abetted by the architecture. What I have is a view not of Boston or Harvard, but a view looking right into the building. So I get to see Frank Gehry every day as I look out of my window. Uh, and, and I like that. Stater is a building that's bubbling over with the joy of invention, the pleasure of space and light, the satisfaction of making something well and the enjoyment of being members of um, 
a, a vital, argumentative, um, bursting with ideas community. This is a building that combines superb technology with humanity and fun. We're about to interview the uh, MIT Generations, but before we do, I'd like to make a brief announcement. The MIT News Office has produced a brochure that outlines the accomplishments of Chuck Vest's administration and career at MIT. That brochure is available at the tent behind you, and you can pick it up anytime you like. It's a very interesting brochure, and it picks up every one of the important points of uh, Chuck's career, which, as you know, will come to an end as president with this commencement after having been president for 13 and a half years. So the MIT News Office has made that available to all of you. Now we have behind me the generational MIT group. So we're going to first start with you, ma'am. What is your name? Marion Lappin. And tell us, how many generations? We have three generations in my family. My husband, class of 1935, my son, class of 64, and now a grandson who's getting his master's in 204. That's unbelievable. Her, her, your, uh, was your, uh, your husband was class of 35? for RCA for many years. That was the year I was born. <laughs> May I ask how old you are? Yes, 91. How about that? May I have this dance? <laughs> I t I'd rather play tennis. Do you play tennis yes, now? I do. I do. Several times a week. Indoors in the winter, outdoors in the summer. Is that what you attribute your good health and yes. to tennis? Yes. All right, everybody, take up tennis. And this man here is her son. But not the one that went to MIT. Yes, he went to Penn. That's okay. Penn's good. Penn's good. And you, ma'am? Hi, I'm Margie Keller, and I'm here with my husband, Rob Keller. Uh, our daughter, Karen Keller, is graduating in 2004. I graduated in 1968 in physics. My husband graduated in 1970, a PhD in physics. And my daughter's grandfather has a, a master's in chemistry in 1948. How about that? And you, ma'am? Uh, Elizabeth Sharon. My father-in-law is class of 1930 Sloan School, and I'm come back for my 30th reunion, uh, also from the Sloan School, and my son is graduating today in uh, course eight. All right, folks, that's it. There's, if I counted correctly, there's something like 12 generations of MIT graduates represented in this line. That's really amazing. Thank you so much, and especially to you. You are wonderful. I want to know what happened to the Tar Hut. I remember coming on a fancy day in May, and young men were trying to climb this hut that was covered with black tar. Oh, I know what happened. Do you know what happened? Warren will tell you what happened. Technique rush is what that was. Yeah. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I, you, I, didn't somebody get hurt or something? No, it was tar is tar carcinogenic. Oh, tar is carcinogenic. It was bad for your health. All right. The paddles came out the top of the roof. Thank you all, folks. Okay, I think we're. MIT's motto, as Warren told you, is mans et manos, mens et manos, which stands for mind and hand. At MIT, students learn by doing, as illustrated in these next three easy pieces. Look at the hugeatron. Warren.
more and more our students are looking for their MIT experience to be the foundation of a career and life that has many dimensions to it. And I think we're seeing more of those students, and I think we're serving them much better as we quite consciously try to expand the range of activities that go beyond the classroom and laboratory. In the end, when you see your project helping people rather than just going up and getting dusty on a shelf somewhere, uh, it really inspires you to, and shows you what you're really doing with your life or, with, or why you really want to learn the engineering that you're learning. It's a great market. It's waiting to change and we believe we can change it. Thank you. One of the things that the Institute does is it fosters like um, individual initiative and creates opportunities uh, for that to happen. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our last Senate meeting of the term. Through the MIT Washington program, I spent the summer on the Senate floor working on legislation. And I brought that experience back here at MIT um, to be the MIT's UA speaker. Extracurricular activities are really important in that they're the way that students get to apply all the theory that they learn in the classroom. B now steps on the garden bug, leads forth, and lowers himself to the garden. We're not simply educating the mind of the student, but we're trying to educate the student to be able to actually accomplish things. And stand himself back up. For the first time since I came to MIT, I really feel like I have a purpose beyond my four or five years here or beyond the next problem set. They learn incredible amounts about leadership, teamwork, sportsmanship, and courage, the willingness to take risks and push their abilities beyond what they think they can achieve. Just being able to deal with lots of different types of situations. There's one, one type of competence that you have in being able to, to sit at a lab bench and solve a scientific problem. It's a different skill set to be able to interact with different kinds of people uh, to accomplish some task. Participating in these extracurricular activities has given me the confidence to lead an organization and the experience in working with other people that I really believe that I can walk into any kind of a situation and have had some kind of experience that has prepared me for anything that might arise. RoboSnail is being developed in the Hatsopolis Microfluids Lab here at MIT. We're interested in the fluids lab at studying fluids at very small scales. Microfluidics is becoming increasingly important today, mostly because of medical and biological applications. Um, people are learning to build these labs on a chip um, in which you have fluids that flow through very small channels. Maybe chemical reactions take place in those channels. Um, and the first thing you need to know if you're really going to design these chips effectively is you have to understand the fluid motion at those small scales. A real snail moves by a series of stretching and compression waves. Basically, the only way the snail interacts with a substrate is through a thin layer of fluid. The slime is actually incredibly interesting. It's not a Newtonian fluid, which means that the characteristics of the fluid change depending on how you stress it. And when you go to very, very small scales, um, suddenly you have a completely different set of forces that become important. And you have to learn to either beat those forces or use them to your advantage. RoboSnail is answering the question of how can we use these high pressures in thin films to actually get something to propel itself. From back here? Okay. But you don't the get current version of RoboSnail is a prototype. Um, we built him mostly as a proof of concept to show that you really can generate forward momentum using the pressures that build up in these lubricating layers. Upside down? Yeah. Okay. I hadn't really gone through it with Brian yet to know what he RoboSnail <laughs> was really initiated and designed by graduate student Brian Chan. Brian is one of the most creative students I've, I've ever come across. The guy can build anything mechanical. You give him, you tell him, I need something that walks on water, he'll build it. Last year I had to take, I was taking a uh, fluids course and we, we had to do a, a course project. Then I, I saw some web pages on, on water snails and how they move and I decided to, to make a robo snail. I just went to California and took a look at the banana slugs, which are uh, these huge slugs. They grow up to like seven or eight inches. And uh, since they're so big, you could see what's going on. And if you look closely at the bottom, uh, you could see that 
um, you could see that they also have these compression waves, which is actually how I got the idea for this machine. We are extremely good at designing things that move on flat surfaces. If we build a road, we can design a vehicle that goes on it. But snails can climb up a vertical wall, and that's something that we have not been able to design yet. Um, and that's something where I think we can learn a lot from looking at these natural systems. You know, I notice that a lot of times people, they think of bugs or snails and they just get grossed out and they don't really care. But uh, if, if we take the time to actually observe these, these creatures, uh, we can learn a lot. It's, it's taking a biological creature that after all this time still exists and so his motion must have some advantage to it or it would have fallen out of the evolutionary chain. And we're looking at it saying, okay, well, if it has applications in real life, then maybe there's a way to model it to have applications in something else that we want to do later on. All right, I just looked at my watch, and my watch says that it is 9.23. The guests of honor are beginning to process, and they will be here in about seven minutes. You can take a look up on the screen, and you'll see them getting ready to come here to Killian Court. This is a good time for me to outline some of the uh, protocols when they come. First of all, we know that each of you is going to be very anxious to get the best possible view or photograph of your graduate. But I urge you to be considerate of the fellow guests around you. Please do not stand on the chairs to take pictures. We've had people in the past do that, and they've actually hurt themselves. And we don't really want that to happen to you. So whatever you do, don't step on the chairs. And also remember when you're taking pictures to be mindful of the people around you so that you don't block their view as well. So you might take a moment now to introduce yourself to those people around you if you don't know them so that you can work this out among yourselves. We would also like to request that you now take the time to put your cell phones in a non-audible mode. In the unlikely, and we hope it uh, doesn't occur, in the unlikely event that you'll need medical attention, the medical tent is located at the rear of Killian Court. The words to the national anthem and the MIT school song are printed in the commencement program in addition to some helpful information regarding logistics. So you might want to take a look at that. There will be some people who will be wearing red jackets in the procession, a very interesting group of people, and Warren Seaman will tell you about them. The red jackets, which you will see, I am wearing one of those red jackets. I'll tell you why I am in a minute. But these mark the 50-year class. You can only wear the red jacket, the cardinal red jacket, when you reach the 50-year class. And so as, mar as part of the procession coming in today, there will be members of the class of 54. 54 coming in as a group, and they will uh, be seated as a group. Um, you can become an honorary member of a class and thereby wear a red jacket. I very proudly wear my class of 1935 jackets because I'm an honorary member of that class. The class includes both doctors and Paul Bear. The, the class uh, coming in today includes uh, Alec Dreyfus and our former president, chairman of the corporation, Paul Gray. Thank you very much, Warren. I'm going to say goodbye to you all for Warren and myself. It's been great visiting with you. And now we're going to introduce one last tape and then say goodbye for commencement 2004. MIT has been visited by many interesting folks over these past years. Here is a sampling in a compilation we call Voices at MIT. MIT is admired 
around the world as a crucible of creative thought, a force for progress, a place where dreams of generations become reality. MIT has done much to make this the American century. The Boston area boasts of several excellent institutions of higher learning, but there is only one MIT. MIT has shown a standard of excellence in education and research that sets a benchmark for universities everywhere. Right now, China is very short of talented managers. What we would like to see more than anything else is to see MIT helping us to train these high-level managerial persons. I promise I will pay what you are paid here. Thank you. <laughs> I personally and, and Microsoft have been an uh, incredible beneficiary of the kind of work uh, that goes on in, in here and, and other places like this. Uh, here at MIT, uh, over 50 years ago, there was a, a vision laid down by Vannevar Bush that we're probably about 20% oh, of the, the way to achieving. I can't tell you how much I have personally benefited from this institution. As part of this wonderful campaign, I would like to put $100 million on the table. If one is unfortunate enough to be disabled, this is the age in which to be so. The disabled have a lot to thank technology for. I probably wouldn't have survived. And I certainly wouldn't have been able to write a best-selling book if I had been born any earlier. Managing innovation and figuring out how to actually turn good ideas into products is, is a really interesting thing that you probably don't learn about in universities. It's not about just technology. Uh, it's about the way people are treated. It's about uh, how you motivate people. What was that inspiration which led suddenly to the World Wide Web? For me, I wanted the thing to be a project management tool that allows all to work together, not management in the top down, but management in the working together way. So I then said it should be intercreative, a universal space for people to communicate through sharing knowledge. We are at the dawn of a true innovation age. It's estimated that the entire store of human knowledge now doubles every five years. I would like to thank um, MIT for this incredible honor, which is, I have to say, the first academic honor I've ever received. So it's nice to start at the top. This is uh, such a great institution dedicated to the search for the new um, and, and to the openness of thought that that search requires. This case is, is the great test uh, of where we stand on the issue of freedom and solidarity and the future of our own culture. For in the end, I believe the real challenge of history is to resist the tendency so prevalent today to label, to stereotype, to expose, to denigrate, and instead to bring common sense and empathy to our subjects so that the past can truly come alive, if only for a few moments, in all of its beauty, glory, sadness, and complexity. Young people like you are always the vanguard of any social movement, setting an energetic tone of courage and commitment. And now we need you to once again lead us to a higher and more noble destiny. 21st century America belongs to you. Take good care of it. Thank you, and God bless you. Hello again, everyone. I'm now talking to Larry Isaacson, who is the director of Mass Brass. The Mass Brass is the ensemble who will be providing music for the um, commencement this morning. Uh, and Larry is uh, currently assistant director uh, of the uh, music division 
at the Boston Conservatory. He was actually on the faculty of MIT, uh, the staff of MIT from 19, what, 1990? 1990 to 2000. And, uh, and uh, now you're at the Boston Conservatory. And what are your duties there? Actually, I produce their concerts. There are about 30 concerts a year that we do, both orchestra, wind ensemble, musical theater, dance, opera, and I, I oversee all of those. I wonder if you could tell the folks a little bit about the music that they're going to be hearing uh, as the graduates uh, process into Killian Court, Larry. Sure. We put together a really good combination of music, things that you would be familiar, things like Copeland and Anderson and Gershwin, and also music that's been written either for the MIT Brass Ensemble or for this graduation in particular. We had Kevin Koska write a piece a few years ago for us, and we actually will do that as well as part of the processional for the students, in addition to pomp and circumstance. So it's a lot of familiar, a lot of older things, and a lot of new things that we sort of introduce as well. It should be very enjoyable. I understand that there's something of your own in this uh, uh, program as well. Yes, the fanfare, when the color guard comes in, it's actually John Williams, I didn't write it. I arranged it for this grouping. It's his Olympic fanfare, one of his Olympic fanfares, and we'll use that for the color guard today. I'll be looking forward to hearing that because, uh, as you know, I play a brass instrument myself and I don't think there's a lovelier sound than brass. Uh, tell me, what are you going to do next? Well, I'm going to head off to Aspen in, a, in about a week and do their July 4th concert. It's only, I gather there's 10,000 people here today, it's only 5,000 in that audience. It's a small audience. A uh, come down, but not much one. <laughs> Larry, it's always a pleasure to hear you and the mass brass and to hear your wonderful music. Uh, what would commencement be without it? Thank you very much, Thank you, and the stage is now yours.
Ladies and gentlemen, the academic procession will enter Killian Court in about 10 minutes. At this time, please welcome the MIT Campus Police Color Guard.
ladies and gentlemen, the academic procession led by the Chief Marshal will now enter Killian Court. Welcome to the, can you hear me, Larry? Larry? Okay. Okay. Welcome to the, uh, our 136th uh, uh, MIT commencement, the first one in 19, 1868 at 13 graduates. We have a few more than that today. President of the MIT Alumni Association carries the mace, which is the symbolic um, instrument for the institute. There's Chuck Vest, current president. There's Raphael Bras, who's the um, chair of the faculty. And uh, this is what, Norman, did you mention? It's the 138th? 136th. 138th. It's hard to tell because in, in 1944 there were two graduations during World War II, so ah, right. it, it's either 136 or 137. President Vest is wearing the uh, recently minted MIT gown, the uh, crimson and gray. This year, there are going to be 2,205 undergraduates and graduate students scheduled to receive 1,114 bachelor's degrees, 1,161 masters, 211 doctors, doctorates, and 10 engineering degrees. This is the procession of the faculty coming in to, s to be seated on the stage. The stage is covered by a huge sail put made by the MIT Ocean Engineering faculty. There's a glimpse of all of the degrees that are going to be hand handed out, and you can see what a logistic problem it is to get them all stacked up in the right order so that when the student comes up onto the platform, is, uh, her name is announced, he or she gets the right diploma. That close-up of the mace you saw has the beaver, MIT's mascot, on, on its top, and it's, the bottom of it is an acorn. We're looking at Steve Lerman there. He is the uh, master of, um, of uh, the new uh, graduate dorm uh, on Albany Street. Very active member of the MIT community. There's a, a partial view of the audience for the uh, commencement ceremony. Most of those people started gathering here about 7.30 this morning. So they've been out there for most of them for two to two and a half hours already. The sail works as a, um, of course a protection from the sun when you're sitting there. But it's also, uh, in the past, it's uh, acted as an umbrella when there have been really inclement uh, commencements. We, we should point out that this is sort of a miracle day. 
The last two weeks have been almost continuous rain here in the Boston area, and yesterday it rained off and on most of the day, yet today beam came forth just this beautiful, cool, wonderful day. Rain is predicted again for tomorrow, so it's this uh, sun has shined uh, brightly on MIT today. Yes, I mean, if the weather were traffic, uh, MIT would be, uh, let's say, if the weather were New York traffic, MIT would be a New Yorker trying to um, be, um, trying to get across the street. We've managed to dodge so many different storm systems uh, yesterday and today. We had yesterday the hooding ceremony, and it rained before it, and then when the ceremony started, the sun shone, and when the ceremony was over, the clouds came back in again and rained some more. And just look at the sky above uh, uh, the dome now. There isn't a cloud in the sky. I can't remember in recent years a commencement which has had cloudless sky like this. For those of you who may be watching who are not uh, familiar with MIT, this is MIT's great court, Killian Court, which was dedicated in 1916, 88 years ago. And it has traditionally served as MIT's open living room where everything from graduations, commencements, to inauguration of new presidents, to scientific happenings, to celebrations of the World War, end of World War uh, II, just whatever has been uh, happening is sort of reflected by the events in the great court, uh, in court. Yes, now there is um, uh, the president of MIT, Chuck Vest, as I said, this is, um, going to be his, um, probably his last um, commencement as president. Of course, everything depends on uh, this and who the new president is and when the new president can come. But Chuck announced uh, several months ago that he was stepping down. Right now, he's talking to Elias Zahuni, who is uh, director of the National Institutes of Health. Dr. Uh, Zahuni will uh, provide the principal address. You, now you see entering the 50-year class, which with their red jackets. This is a symbol of MIT's longevity, but uh, since 1966, the 50-year class has been allowed to wear the cardinal red jacket. So these are all members of the class of 50, of six, 54 coming in. In that uh, previous shot, we um, had a kind of a poignant uh, picture there. That was uh, of uh, Paul Gray, who is uh, now taking his seats with the other 50-year core. Paul has, of course, spent, I think, 41 years attending commencements at MIT, sitting on this stage. Now, the, uh, this will be the first one that he'll spend sitting with his uh, comrades. Uh, it's Phil Curry, who is the dean of the School of uh, Humanities and Social Studies. Social Sciences. Social Sciences. And there is uh, uh, Tom McNanty, who's dean of the School of Engineering, with the orange tie. And... Uh, Who's that? Uh, that's the dean of um, the Sloan School. That's, uh, I believe, that's uh, uh, Dick Schmelenzi. Yeah. Dick Schmelenzi is. So there are three deans, three of the five deans, and the chair of the faculty on the lower left. There's Eleanor Westney, the um, woman in the orange cap. She is also Sloan School. Her specialty is Japan. And. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, she's going to um, go back to Japan next year honor, for her sabbatical. The class of 2004. We're just about to have the procession of the class of 2004. They come in from Memorial Drive on to the stage. Now I know on the right there is um, Larry Benedict, who is the uh, Dean for uh, Student Affairs at MIT. 
And although he's shaded, I can't tell yet. That should be to Larry's right. That should be Bob Redwine. But it doesn't look like Bob. Who is that Bob the Redwine is the dean of um, undergraduate education. It's getting closer. Yep. Those are the two deans. The two most important um, deans in the undergraduate life of these um, students. Bob Redwine on the screen left and Larry Benedict screen right. A terrific uh, duo. They've been in their offices now, I guess, for three years, and uh, they've just done an absolutely splendid job. MIT is incredibly lucky to have two gifted uh, the group standing on either side, but you see to the right now are the families. Um, this morning we found that there were people from as far away as Perth, Australia, and Argentina, India, of course, people from around the world have come for this glorious event. Other speakers at the um, event today, beside uh, President Vest and uh, Elias Zerhouni, will include uh, the president of the Graduate Student Council, Eric Caulfield, and Maria Hidalgo, who's president of the class of 2004, who will present the class gift. The invocation will be delivered by another MIT long-timer, Reverend Robert M. Randolph, who is Senior Associate Dean for Students at MIT and an affiliate minister at Harvard University's Memorial Church. We should indicate, perhaps, that the commentary, as we were doing it, in case you've joined recently, is being, by, is being given by Jay Kaiser and by Warren Siemens, myself. Yes, I'm Jay Kaiser, and to my right is Warren Siemens. <laughs> Warren was um, Warren what? Yeah. Warren was director of the MIT Museum for many, many years before he retired in 1996. Uh, Warren retired two years before I did, and uh, both of us can attest to uh, the glories of retirement. And there's the mace, the MIT mace, standing up above the, the crowd there. Dr. Zerhouni is the um, 15th director of the NIH. Uh, he took office in May of 2002, and his major focus at the um, NIH has uh, been in laying out new pathways of uh, discovery in clinical research enterprise and uh, research teams for re-engineering uh, clinical work. Primarily concerned with biomedical research. The, as the graduates file into the uh, Killian Court, they must get into a certain order because as their names are called, uh, they go up to the, under the um, awning and receive their diploma. 
at the time they do this, they are read simu simultaneously. The grad students and the uh, undergrads are read, and they, so they are divided so that they go up, and you'll see two diplomas being given out almost simultaneously. Earlier you saw the stacks of diplomas, which must be exactly in order so that each person gets exactly the diploma he's empowered to. There we see the stacks of, of uh, diplomas. There's the MIT mace carried into the um, uh, into the procession uh, by the um, uh, president of the MIT Alumni Association. President of the MIT Alumni Association. That mace goes back how far, Warren? That's a, the beaver's on top of the mace, right? Yes, the beaver's on top, and, a, and a, an acorn is on the bottom. Uh -huh. And what's in the middle there? That's a, it's an urn, right? Yes. And uh, there's uh, and there are ashes in that urn, right? I do not really know what's in there. <laughs> this this particular urn only go to the particular mace is only perhaps twenty to twenty two years old. It, it's not a, it's a relatively new tradition in the in the uh, entire proceedings. I see. Carrying the mace is a new carrying the mace. Yeah. Well, we know what the, uh, the we, we did a hooding ceremony yesterday. As I said, there were 211 doctorates uh, were, were hooded yesterday. I might say a word about what that means. When you become a, uh, a, a PhD, you get a hood. And you can see these uh, backs here of the faculty, all of those colorful things there, the yellows and the blues, those are hoods. Those hoods are uh, go back to medieval times, when they uh, reflect a time when scholars were uh, mendicants and they would lecture and uh, for uh, their uh, pains they would be given uh, money or food or things of that sort, which were kept in the uh, these hoods. Now they're strictly ornamental, and what they do is they reflect the school that the. Uh, graduate came from. For example, uh, my PhD was in uh, from Yale, and it's a uh, very deep blue. The uh, MIT hood will be uh, crimson and uh, gray. Cardinal. Cardinal, Cardinal. yes. Uh, Cardinal and gray. And yesterday, um, we gave the hoods to the PhD candidates, which means that this ceremony w was uh, can be cut in by uh, about an hour. It took that long to, uh, we used to give the hoods in this same ceremony, but dividing these ceremonies in two was a wonderful idea because not only did it give special recognition to PhDs, but it also enabled this uh, ceremony to move along at a faster clip. The books that everybody is holding is, is the commencement program which also lists all of the uh, graduates in the order by the school, by, you know, and uh, usually it lists the hometown as well. Catherine Wilmore, Vice President, Secretary of the Corporation. Alan Buffert, Treasurer. So we've got what? Uh, what did I say? Two thousand? Yep, twenty-two hundred. Twenty-two hundred people are marching in from Howard Johnson Athletic Center, cross Mass Avenue, and up into uh, Killian Court. Chuck Vest, outgoing president. Dr. Zahumi, next to him. Court uh, was dedicated 30 years ago this year in honor of James Ryan Killian, former president and chairman of the corporation at the time of his retirement from the latter. Uh, prior to that time, it had been known as the Great Court, 
uh, and has always, as I indicated earlier, had always been the center of MIT activity. However, graduations traditionally were not held in the Great Court. Starting in 19, early 1920s, they decided to try it, uh, to try to hold the um, graduation ceremonies in the court. But in 23, the tent fell down that they were uh, under, and they moved back to Symphony Hall for most of the next 20 to 25 years. Then after the Rockwell cage was built, uh, post-war, they moved the graduation to that facility, where it remained until about 20 years ago, we moved back outside. And weather has usually cooperated, although there have been times when um, uh, raincoats were furnished to everybody attending, and umbrellas were usually the and those two or three years were the primary thing you saw looking out from this direction. For those of you familiar with the, uh, this view of the court, when you turn around and see the, review going, the view going back toward the Boston skyline, there's now a large tent across there, which makes it blocks off the view of the river and Memorial Drive and pretty well hides the um, the, uh, the view, which is always spectacular. Those uh, flowers that you see there are not um, always there. They are uh, brought in especially for the commencement exercises. And what will happen after the commencement exercises is that they'll all be taken into the uh, lobby beneath the dome that you now see, and they're sold to the general public and the proceeds go to some charitable the community service fund, I believe. The community service fund. So it's um, that's always a great event to uh, go down and buy some of those beautiful flowers. They don't go to waste. Go to a very good cause. The dome you currently see is has been the um, scene of some of MIT's most famous hacks. The the police cruiser on the dome, the helicopter this earlier this year. It's always been a student um, central thing to have been, uh, to, to have done a hack on the, the main dome. Yes, the students um, know how to get up there. They're very <laughs> clever about getting up there. Even though it's illegal, of course. The uh, most recent hack there was a beautiful, beautiful uh, reproduction of the Kitty Hawk, of the Wright the, Brothers' the Wright, plane, yeah. the Wright Brothers' plane, mm -hmm. and um, the hawks that uh, the uh, red-tailed hawks that have uh, taken up residence uh, at MIT, uh, one of them is named Kitty Hawk, <laughs> uh, and I think uh, that uh, he was named uh, Kitty Hawk not after the Wright Brothers' plane, but after the uh, MIT hack. The hack is a, it does cause some uh, consternation on the part of uh, officialdom at MIT because on the one hand it is a remarkable expression of a student ingenuity. On the other hand, it's dangerous to go up on the, the uh, dome. But these are MIT students and if you block all of the known entrances to the dome, they'll find another way. <laughs> they'll find another way. And even if it means scaling the columns from outside. There is uh, Dr. Vest now, and a good shot of Dr. Vest and Dr. Zahuni, who came to the United States from Algeria in 1975. He earned a medical degree from the University of Algiers and he was accepted as a radiology resident at John Hopkins University School of Medicine where he became chairman of the Department of Radiology and Radiological Science, radiologist in chief and president of the Clinical Practice Association, executive vice dean and professor of biomedical engineering. Uh, he singly or jointly holds eight patents for various computerized tomography and magnetic resonance imaging inventions. And it's significant that uh, our speaker today would come from the biological sciences. Uh, that is uh, one of the burgeoning areas uh, 
uh, in most institutions of higher learning, and particularly uh, in uh, MIT. It'll be interesting to see what Dr. Zahuni has to say. In the uh, upper left-hand corner there, you uh, saw uh, Bob Silby, who's Dean of the School of Science. Those who have received a commission through ROTC will be wearing their um, uniform for the respective service that they um, did their ROTC uh, training in. What I've been looking for as the um, graduates have um, processed down the center aisle is I've been looking for some uh, originality <laughs> in uh, their uh, costume. And Every, I don't see any. Yeah. No, it's been very staid. And only one or two um, um, walk uh, cell phones as well. Have you seen? I mean, I don't see a single adorned uh, Not one mortarboard. No. Amazing. A few minutes ago, a few seconds ago, we saw the class of Ought Four's banner. Each class is uh, has a banner. It's prepared for them by the institute, and then this is brought out for uh, reunions and for other events that the class has. So it's um, something maintained, the tradition maintained by the Institute. There's this one cell phone. This too goes, that tradition goes back to 1868, the class banner. Yeah. Yes, I've noticed that over the last the several years, the, uh, the, the class has been less adventurous. Yeah, there's the another cell phone. La there's two cell phones. Last year, almost everybody who came in had a cell phone as they were talking to somebody. Yeah, they were usually Maybe. talking to the person next to them. <laughs> Maybe that is uh, something that has become passe. Let's, let's hope so. But I think it's fascinating that there's so little adornment. Yeah, yeah. I, I believe that we're going into a conservative cycle. Oh, boy. That's Bob Brown on the right. He is um, provost of MIT. Provost is the chief academic officer of the institute. And uh, the word provost, I don't know if you knew this, Warren, but the word provost actually uh, comes from the same root as the word for uh, preposition. Really? That's right. It's the same word. It's the, the uh, Latin uh, priponere. It's uh, from the past participle. And a provost is someone that you should never end an argument with. <laughs> <laughs> As I say, he is the chief academic officer, and uh, everybody else reports through him to the president. We've been talking about uh, Dr. Zahuni uh, giving the uh, principal address. The president of uh, MIT, uh, of course, also uh, delivers an address each uh, year. And when the president uh, delivers address, it's called uh, the charge. And so uh, what the president actually does is, I think the proper usage is the president charges the class, mm -hmm. which seems to me a bit unfortunate since he's been charging the <laughs> class for the last four years. <laughs> we won't <laughs> say in which way. But um, I behind, think that, yes. is behind him, uh, behind the flag, is uh, Ike Colbert, who's dean of the grad school. Yeah. Dean of the Graduate School. There's a great shot of the adornment. I wish I knew the names of those flowers. I don't, so I'll just <laughs> point them out. There's some blue ones and there's some pink ones. Uh, and, and Geraniums. Uh, are geraniums. Those, oh, yeah, there are, are those blue ones? ones are, the pinkish ones are uh, geraniums. Are the blue ones hydrangeas? No, they're ageratum. What? Ageratum. Ageratum. This is this is a family show, Warren. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. You, uh, uh, adjurate him yourself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you could call it a geratum. Uh, what? You could call it a geratum, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> do you? Uh, how do you know that? I was a horticulture major in college. <laughs> well, well, one does never see a horticulture major, really? Yeah, I switched uh, early on. I'll be darned. Else. I'll be darned. <laughs> well, I mean, here's some okay. department heads. There's um, St Stan Anderson. St Stan Anderson, architecture. Head of the architecture. And 
and um, Ian Hutchinson. Uh, what is, uh, I'm, I'm not sure of his department. That's Ian Hutchinson in the blue. And I don't recognize the man in the yellow next to him. That's Steve Lippert in the uh, MIT gown there. The, well, it's not an MIT gown, is it? Looks a little like it. Uh, that's, uh, he's, uh, and he's, uh, Steve Lippert is uh, head of uh, chemistry, and he's talking to Lester Thoreau, the man who used to be dean of the uh, school of, uh, 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 the uh, Sloan, school. Sloan School. And next to him, I don't know who he is, but he looks awfully comfortable. <laughs> he's got his feet up on the railing there. With dark glasses. Yes, John Belcher is talking. That's John Belcher with the tassel over his um, uh, left eye. And uh, he's talking to Steve Lerman, who is on his right. And directly in front of him Now, the next person we're going to see is the mayor of the city of Cambridge. And he's the one nearest us. And he's talking to Phil Clay who is the chancellor. He was from the Department of Urban Studies. And the mayor, of course, uh, presided last a um, uh, few weeks ago over that historic evening uh, when uh, the uh, same-sex marriages were allowed yep. in, uh, in Cambridge. And uh, Phil Clay is sandwiched in between the mayor on the left and uh, uh, Mr. Mead, who is the new chairman of the corporation. He's now adjusting his cuff. That's him. And right above, yep, that's it. We're reaching just about the end of the procession, I believe. Takes about half an hour for all the 2,200 uh, people who get into the Great Killian Court. All right, we're, now you can see the uh, PhD candidates, but uh, they already have their hoods. Uh, there was one PhD candidate yesterday who actually came up on the uh, platform. She already had a hood. This was her second PhD. And uh, you might catch a glimpse of her. I don't know if she's allowed to wear two hoods, but it'd be interesting to see if you do that. Well, I mean, not allowed. I'm sure you could allow. There isn't any hood policeman around, but I wonder what the protocol is if you have two PhDs. And she's now enrolled in a program to get a third doctor. Uh, the MIT uh, Harvard Health uh, Joint uh, Medical Health Program. The music in the background, as I um, uh, I'm sure you can hear, is uh, Mass Brass, directed by Larry Isaacson, the brass ensemble that entertains um, uh, the commencement every year. Larry was actually a member of MIT a teaching staff from uh, 1990 to 2000. He is now assistant director of uh, the music division of the Boston Conservatory. And right after today's event, well, just within a couple of days, he's going to be um, hopping a plane to Aspen, Colorado, where he will uh, lead the Aspen Festival in uh, a concert. view from behind the speaker's uh, podium. Well, we're very soon the, uh, com the commencement ceremonies will start.
Priscilla Rebecca, Gray yeah. and Becky Vest, the current and immediate past president's wives. Okay, we are ready to sign off because the commencement is coming. It's commencing. This is Warren Siemens and Jay Kaiser saying goodbye for another year. The corporation and the faculty of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology are now declared convened. Together with this assembly, on the occasion of the commencement exercises of this institution for the conferring of degrees. The stage assembly and the audience will please rise for the invocation by Dean Robert Randolph and remain standing to join the MIT corollaries in the singing of one verse of the Star Spangled Banner. Almighty God, known by many names, heard in many voices, we invoke your presence with us this day. Today we celebrate the accomplishments of those who receive diplomas and of those who begin new chapters in their lives. We invoke your blessings upon them. There are those here who have passed through MIT and seldom looked to right or left. There are those here who have struggled and arrive here today battered and bruised. Make each mindful, we pray, of what they have accomplished. Let success mend self-esteem and give perspective to achievement. Bless as well, Almighty God, those who have supported them in their work, in the classroom, at home, and on the way. Teachers who have given of themselves in ways that will only be understood with the passage of time. Families who have sacrificed much. Friends who have learned from them and taught them as only peers can. We ask special blessings on President Charles Vest and his good wife, Rebecca. They have given much to this institution, and we ask that the next chapter in their lives be as successful as their time with us. We pray for the security of our nation and for the safety of those who defend freedom, whoever and wherever they are. Make us ever mindful of those on whose shoulders we stand, as well as those who follow in our path. And as we celebrate accomplishment and transition, may we continue to seek wisdom. Hear our prayer. Amen.
Please be seated. I'm pleased to welcome to the platform the Honorable Michael A. Sullivan, Mayor of the City of Cambridge. Mayor. I'm also pleased to welcome Dr. Elias A. Zerhuni, Director of the National Institutes of Health, who will now give the graduation address. Dr. Zerhuni. Thank you very much. It's really a privilege for me to, to be here and celebrate with you on this beautiful day. I also wish my mother-in-law was here to see what I was doing today because I still have to convince her on a daily basis that her daughter made the right choice many years ago. <laughs> I'm honored to be here because I also, as a parent myself, can feel the joy of your parents and friends who are here. As a parent, I remember the birth of my first uh, son as if it was yesterday. And I can tell you, your parents also remember those 22 years ago and days when you were born. For you, those 22 years may have seemed very long and arduous, but I can tell you for parents, they are very short. They all remember you as a baby, and they can't believe have you become such a formidable graduate at one of the most prestigious institutions in the world. And that's an illustration of what I call the relativity principle of time and aging. The older you are, the faster, the faster time seems to go by, and the faster tuition bills seem to come through as well. But you know, you are the legacy of your parents to this world, and they all deserve our heartfelt recognition for doing such a good job. And I'd like all the graduates, if you don't mind, to give a round of applause to your parents. It's also a great honor for me to uh, give this address in the last year of President Charles Vest's extraordinary tenure at MIT. There's no question that Dr. Vest, from my point of view as a federal agency official, today is one of the most influential thought leaders in higher education. He has this rare combination that you don't find a lot in life that combines vision and flawless execution. Well, last night, he conducted the Boston Pops with a flawless execution, I hear. President Vest, we're impressed. <laughs> Recently, my younger son, Adam, actually uh, was initiated in a fraternity called Phi Kappa Psi. And I was, I was, I was checking to make sure that this was a, 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 a good fraternity, a decent one. I found out that Dr. Vest was a member of that fraternity, so when people ask me now, but my son, Adam, I say, oh, don't worry. He belongs to the exact same fraternity Dr. Vest belongs to. So I'm very proud to, uh, to do this in his last year. But when I was preparing my speech, what can you say to uh, 2,200 very bright graduates that will make a difference in, in telling them about where you see life and where you see your field of science, where you see yourself? And as I was preparing my speech, I was looking at what was the best strategy to do that? And I came across uh, the story of a commencement speaker at Yale University who had the great idea of using every letter of the Yale name as a starting concept. So he used Y for youth, and he went on and on about youth, and then he used A for ability, which you all have, and he went on and on. And from the back of the room, somebody said, thank God we're not the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. <laughs> So I give up on that strategy. I'm not going to use that strategy today. <laughs> Instead, I'll tell you about what I think are the very critical, both scientific challenges of the 21st century, but also what is your role in it. The challenge, frankly, for us in the 21st century is one that we have brought upon ourselves. And I'll just go back in history a little bit to give you the perspective of how I see it. 
when you, when you think about the universe, you hear that about 13.7 billion years ago, there was a big bang, and off of that big bang came the universe, and then planets and solar systems and galaxies organized themselves. That was the first big bang, but there were other big bangs. The Earth came about five billion years ago, and about four billion years ago, with a mysterious uh, event, life appeared. And what happened is that through replication of very special molecules, DNA and RNA, something very unique happened whereby natural evolution allowed through multiple variations and survival of the fittest, the emergence of a very diverse life on Earth. But there is a third Big Bang, and this is the one you're living in today, which you have to take account of, and that is the Big Bang of knowledge. It occurred about 100,000 years ago when about 10,000 individuals, at most, as we look at the genome and we look at the variation of the genome across the human population, it is very clear that all of us have come from the same founding population of 10,000 individuals in Africa about 100,000 years ago. So we're not that different from each other in historical terms. And yet, that changed the game of life because through knowledge, through our ability, through our intelligence, we're able to transfer information from one child, from one parent to a child, from a parent to another one. And through generations, we're able to develop tools of adaptation the world has never seen. We've been able to change our environment at a speed, at a velocity that is much faster than what we can adapt to ourselves through our natural mechanisms of natural evolution. Let me give you an example, obesity is an emerging public health threat. This year, the Center for Disease Control said that obesity will be the second, is the second cause of premature mortality and morbidity in this country. Now, why is that? Because for millions of years, our genes evolved in the context of food scarcity. There was not a lot of food around us for millions of years. And all of a sudden, because of our intelligence, because of our knowledge, we changed that in less than 50 years. Most of our genes are in fact designed to allow you to accumulate energy and keep that energy, which then trans translates itself into overweight and obesity. Well, what are we gonna do about it? What I will dare to say to you is that life sciences and their applications will be the defining challenge of the 21st century bar none. And the reason is that we are changing our environment at a speed which will require us to understand life sciences to a degree we do not understand today. And let me tell you, it will require the intelligence and commitment of many classes of graduates like yours. It is not coming from biology, it will not, the solution will not come from biology alone, it will come from the integration of biology and computer sciences and mathematics and physics and chemistry, and we want to encourage that to happen. Why is this a great opportunity for you? Let me tell you a little story. About a few weeks ago, I was at a meeting of the annual uh, uh, convention of all the biotechnology executives, all the CEOs of the many biotechnology companies in this country were there, assembled in New York with their investment bankers. Now, you know this must be a very important meeting for someone who is trying to get funds for their idea. And I just conducted a poll. And I said to them, I am the director of the NIH. I'm supposed to, is the nation, nation's medical research agency. I want to ask you a question. How much do you think you know of what you need to know to be effective in combating obesity or diabetes and any of the healthcare challenges that we have in front of us. I asked the question, do you think you know 90% of what you need to know? And no one answered that. 50%, no one raised their hand. 20%, no one raised their hand. So I said, what, what about less than 10%? Everybody raised their hand. This is from the leaders of life sciences today. So think about it. Think how much opportunity there is in front of you. 90% of what there is to discover is still ahead of us. Now I turn to the investment bankers, and I said, well, I don't understand this. Now, you are investing good 
dollars on people who just admitted in front of you that they know less than 10% than what they need to know. Can you imagine? And the reason is simple. It is such a great challenge and the risk reward is so great. If you can find just a cure for one of the major diseases of mankind, you will affect that relationship between our environment and ourselves. So it's important, I think, to keep that in perspective and to understand that there is a real race going on between our ability to understand how we respond to our environment biologically and our ability to change that environment in ways and consequences that we, with consequences that we may not always predict. So as a um, NIH director, I have to give you some advice about how to conduct yourself then for the next challenge, if that's the challenge that we think is there. And I can only do this with no certainty, obviously, about what the right answer is. I can only talk to you about myself and the rules I've used in life to go around and, and do this. First and foremost, um, I learned one thing, because I, I came from another country, actually. I, I came from Algeria when I was 24 years old to America, and uh, I immigrated. And I had uh, $300 in my pocket, new wife, and uh, no, no friends, uh, no family. And basically, this is where I learned that you can't make a contribution unless you're connected to others and you're able to connect to others. So I developed these rules called my 50-50 rules. You have to have a balance in life because you never know when you're going to need the interactions of others. So what are these 50-50 rules? Well, the first rule that I'd like to, to, to share with you is this. Today, you're going to receive a diploma. What you know today, I can assure you, is 50% wrong and 50% right. The challenge for you now is to figure out what part is right and what part is wrong. Now, don't take my speech as an excuse to go and ask for a reimbursement on your tuition. I, th I don't think they will do that. But on the other hand, I think it's a very important way to look at the knowledge fund that you have as new scientists, new graduates of MIT. I think it is important to also realize that in life, many of your contributions will not come from your core discipline they will come from disciplines that you probably have no contact with, typically. And this is the other 50-50 rule that I would like to leave you with. Read 50% of what you read in the area that you're interested in, but make sure that 50% of what you read is unrelated to what you have to do. And I did this consistently, because I had to learn a new language, I had to uh, connect with new friends and new disciplines. 50% of what I read was in radiology. I love medical imaging because it combined mathematics and physics, which I love, and medicine, which I think gave me the human contact. And that's why I worked and made these contributions. But 50% of the time, I would read things outside of radiology. It's really fun to see the world that way, but it's also more fun to understand that you are smarter when you're in a company of smarter people than you. It is amazing to see the enrichment that you get from interacting with others. So my rule is, is that 50% of my friends have to be from walks of life that are not directly related to my walk of life. And more importantly, I try to make sure that at least 50% of my friends are smarter than I am. Because you can be assured that at least half of your Life contributions will be stimulated by others uh, that are interacting with you, and you will stimulate others as well. Often you hear about the spark of genius that somebody had, this unique individual, and we all admire these individuals. But it's rarely true that it happens to people who are completely isolated. Throughout scientific history, you've always had that interaction of people, founder groups that got together and created new advances. Witness Watson and Crick. Watson was a zoologist and Crick was a physicist. And coming together, they created the field of molecular biology. Uh, look at uh, laboratories around the world that have been very productive. They've been productive because they have, in fact, encouraged the clustering of people from diverse backgrounds, coming from diverse horizons with different ideas. Now, this, this process is eminently social. It is not an individual process. is a process you have to participate in. 
But now I'm going to tell you about some of the exceptions that I've learned as well. People will tell you that if you go and talk about things you do not understand to people who do not know you, you will tend to look a little stupid. And the, the objection that I hear a lot is, but you can look foolish asking questions about fields you do not understand and, and those people who do not know you. Well, that's true. That's very true. I asked a lot of stupid questions in my life, and you will too. But the one thing I can tell you is that it's not deadly to ask stupid questions. What's deadly is to not ask the right question at the right time. The other is, is um, people will also tell you if you talk too much about your ideas, uh, someone will steal them from you. Well, my response to that is that if you have ideas that are so easy to steal from, they must not be that good. In fact, my experience is different. With uh, truly original ideas, uh, the response is that most people don't believe you. Um, one of the three or four things I did in my life, uh, there were semi-original, were fiercely uh, disbelieved and criticized and initially rejected for both publication and most importantly, NIH funding, which is the agency that I direct today. So don't despair. I even carried this further, this 50-50 rule further, because I spent half of my life in our country and half of my life in another country. I don't recommend you push that to that extent. But as any rule that you make for young colleagues that you talk to, there are big exceptions. First, this rule doesn't mean that you should develop a split personality. It shouldn't split your integrity. Your integrity has to be constant, 100%. Another one is uh, that in affairs of love, I don't think you should play the 50-50 rule. That would be deadly, so don't do it. And last but not least, I would say you should have big dreams, full dreams, not half dreams. You know, it's very simple. You can't put a large box in a small box. Well, you cannot put a full life in a small dream box. What you need is to have a box, a dream box, in a life that is as full as the potential you have today. For universities and, and teachers, there's just no greater satisfaction than seeing you graduate and enter your professional calling. I think you have the potential to transform our understanding of the relationship between humanity and environment this century. I think you need to do it. And you know something? There's nothing greater than coming from a university like MIT to be able to do that. I actually read that um, if you asked yourself about the 100 governments that existed in 1900, how many of the 100 governments that were active in 1900 are still unchanged today? You know what the answer is? Two. There are only two governments in the world that stayed stable for the past 104 years, the United States and Great Britain. If you ask yourself the question, what about universities? Well, let me ask you, if you took the year 1500 and you took the 100 universities that were active in 1500, how many of them do you think have survived intact in 2004? The number is 75 out of 100. So what I can tell you is that universities beat governments hands down. There is no institution that can survive as long as a university if it's cared for by its graduates and alumni. The only institutions that last longer are the institutions of the church. So I'm sure that MIT will certainly be here at the end of this century and many more centuries to come, thanks to you as newly minted graduate and graduates and future alumni. I understand the class of 1954 is here and I want to salute them for coming back to their institution. This is... Because, you know, we're all engaged throughout the world on a global basis with a game that has no frontier, a game that has no nationality, and that is to build the fund of knowledge of humanity to the service of humanity. This was my message. 
believe in yourself. Life sciences are a great challenge. We have a lot to do, and I hope you'll join us in this fight. Good luck to you, and God may bless you all. Thank you, Dr. Zaruni, for your wisdom and your insights. And also, thank you for the great service that you're rendering to our country with your leadership of the National Institutes of Health. Now, Mr. Eric Caulfield, President of the Graduate Student Council, will present a salute to MIT from the graduate student body. Following Mr. Caulfield, Ms. Maria Hidalgo, President of the Senior Class, will present the class gift to President Vest, after which the President will deliver his charge to the graduates. Good morning, family and friends of MIT. From the dawn of the human experiment, we have grappled with the challenge and the potential inherent in our existence. Today, my graduate student brethren and my sistren, you join a grand procession that has marched across the sands of time, marshaled by the first human being who gazed up at the magnificent majesty of a midnight sky and asked the question, what more can I know? Culminating at this time, at this place, at this junction in the space-time continuum with you and this august and awe-inspiring assembly of the academically accomplished. For whether you are the first in your family to attend college or of the fifth generation to finish graduate school, you represent the collective dreams of countless of your comrades and ancestors, some no longer with us, who have aspired for centuries to join with you in this moment here today. For you have become the embodiment of accomplishment, of drive, of passion, of perseverance, of ambition, of strength, and hope. For in graduating today from one of history's great wombs of wondrous ideas, cradles of creativity, nursery for Nobel laureates, you prepare to take your place amongst the great thinkers and movers of our time. For indeed, you have ascended to the top of the Mount Olympus of the modern academic world. However, ascending to the top and becoming the scholastic and pedagogical gods and goddesses of your department does not signify that your journey is over. But to the contrary, it merely means that you have a more excellent view of a future that is pregnant with a plenitude of possibilities. And so now that you've come to MIT and flexed your magnificent mental muscles, made mighty by the methodical mastery of mathematically menacing, scientifically sophisticated, econometrically intimidating systems of equations and such, <laughs> you have proven that you are now ready to leave, for you have outgrown this place. When I take time to consider the significance of this moment, I am compelled to ponder the proclamations of the poet who confessed, I'm tired of sailing my little boat far inside the harbor bar. I want to go out where the big ships float, on the deep where the great ones are. And should my frail craft prove too slight for the waves that sweep those billows o'er, I'd rather go down in a stirring fight than drowse to death by the sheltered shore. For in the purest sense, the poet captures the essence of this experience Exactly. For whether you've been here for one year, or two years, or three years, or in years, or in plus one years, in a career that will last nearly a half century, your greatest deeds have yet to be done. And you can scarcely imagine the impact that you'll have on society and indeed on human history. And so I encourage you not only to reflect on and appreciate the awesomeness 
of your contributions thus far, but also to marvel at the magnificence of future feats yet to come. And so now, as you prepare to set sail for the great world outside of MIT, it is my hope that triumph will be your ever-present companion. May passion fuel your every endeavor. May innovation infect your every invention. And may a preternatural propensity for progress pepper your every project. And may a blazing torch of morality light your path. And as you go forth, I would urge you to stand boldly at the great helm of history and steer a course such that future generations will say with passionate regard that you graduated from MIT and the world is a better place because of it. And so, ye daughters and sons of MIT, it is with the greatest of pride and elation, heartfelt joy and awestruck admiration and the deepest respect that on behalf of the Graduate Student Council, I bid thee, Felicitations. Kong hei, Kong shi nimen, Mubarak ho, Pozdravoliayu, Aku orire, Tebrik ederem, Omedeto, Hongera, Herschlichen Glückwunsch, Mabruk, Congratulazione, Enorabuena, Chestitam, Parabens, Chuka Hamnida. In other words, congratulations on an outstanding display of academic magnificence. Gentle geniuses, history is waiting to hear from you. Thank you. Good morning. Everyone here expects a lot from us. This is because they think we have a lot to contribute to the world, and we do. But you know what? I'll bet we expect a lot more from ourselves because we know just how much we can give. Just look at what we've accomplished in only these past few years. It's exhausting to think about it. We're tired, and the overall sentiment is that it feels so good to be done. But we aren't finished. We may be done here at MIT, but we're only getting started. We have so much to contribute. Today can't be the end. Today is merely a pause, an opportunity for us to catch our breath and reflect on our most recent accomplishments. Tomorrow, we'll continue down our individual paths and join thousands of others whose achievements have changed and will change society forever. We will become MIT alumni. And now, as a symbol of our graduation, we remove our brass rats and we turn them to face outward at the world we are about to join. And as we leave MIT, we, the class of 2004, leave behind our gift to the Institute. Dr. Vest, it is a particular honor to present this year's class gift. Those of us in the class of 2004 are aware that you too will soon be graduating, moving on from your current role as president of MIT. We salute you for all you've done for the Institute, and we wish you all the best as you, as you move into the next stage of your life and career. At this time, it is my privilege to present this gift on behalf of the graduating class of 2004. The HUGE Fund, HUGE stands for helping undergraduates gain excellence, will provide budgetary assistance to under undergraduate students who require additional funding for major projects. This includes additional research funding for EUROPS, theses, and other class projects. So far, 29.3% of the class of 2004 has raised $31,736.67.
283 members of our class have donated thus far, and we only need seven more gifts to get to 30%. So if anyone out there has $10 bills, you know, wave them up in the air and we'll, we'll be by with a collection basket in a few moments. And last, I would just like to say, for lack of a better word, congratulations. Enjoy today, and enjoy the weather. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Hidalgo and Mr. Caulfield. I am most grateful for your words and your gifts but especially for all that you and your fellow students have meant to this great institution. I thought long and hard about what my parting message to you should be, and it is this. Thank goodness I will never again have to speak after Eric Caulfield. <laughs> Be that as it may, here we are again, gathered in Killian Court to celebrate accomplishment, heritage, and passage. It is a major passage in life for you, and it is a major life passage for me. Together we end an important phase of our lives in education and commence a new chapter. It may perhaps seem odd that a community so dedicated to the future gathers here wearing strange and colorful medieval regalia. But it is fitting and seemingly fulfilling of deep human needs that such rituals take place. This ritual reminds us of the continuity through the ages of our role in an unbroken, centuries-old chain of human discovery and accomplishment. But above all, it celebrates your accomplishments during your student years. This is not to say that you have accomplished the remarkable feat of graduating from MIT all on your own. We are indeed surrounded by parents, family, friends, spouses, partners, and children who have supported and sustained you through the years. You will recognize them today by the smiles brought about by their great pride in your accomplishments and no doubt by a great sense of relief to their bank accounts. Let us then, yet again, express our deep appreciation to all who have come to Cambridge today to join you in your commencement ceremony. Thank you, parents. It is also especially wonderful to see the babies and small children who have come to see their mothers and fathers graduate. They, too, are welcome. And as this ceremony stretches onward, I give them special presidential approval to comment on the proceedings at any time and in any manner they see fit. Each of the last 13 years, I have had the honor of briefly addressing those gathered for MIT's commencement ceremony. And each year, I have concluded with the same charge, the same brief statement of advice and challenge to our graduates. Before I do so, yet again, I want to explain what the elements of that charge mean to me and why I think they are important for you as graduates of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. First, you should ponder the unthinkable. You each have completed an intense, rigorous education with a strong scientific or quantitative bent. This is true regardless of the intellectual field in which you concentrated and regardless of the level of degree you are receiving today. Armed with this education and experience, you have an opportunity and a capability to ponder ancient questions in new ways and also to think, of course, about new challenges in new ways. The world in all of its dimensions is evolving at an ever-increasing rate. 
you have an unprecedented opportunity to expand knowledge, and to create wealth and jobs. At the same time, there is a tragic expansion of misery, inhumanity, and illness in our world. And it will take new vision, new thinking, and new levels of determination to alleviate these problems and create a more civil and humane society. In other words, to make a difference in the condition of the world, you must start by pondering the seemingly unthinkable. Is it unthinkable that we might truly be dedicated to sustainable development, that is, to using our energy and material resources in a way that not only respects the natural environment, but offers the developing world a chance to reach the same levels of health and well-being that we enjoy? Is it unthinkable that we should find ways of cutting through the increasing clash of multiple unmovable fundamentalist views and get to the core of humanity beneath them? Is it unthinkable that we could at last truly bridge once and for all the racial divides in this country and see that our best hope for the future rests in pulling together rather than pulling apart? That's the first challenge, think the unthinkable. A corollary to that is to question the status quo. If we are to advance the condition of society to create what could be, we must first question what is. By definition, advancing means changing and moving in more positive, more productive directions. The status quo, therefore, will not correct the inequities and ineffectiveness that are rampant in so many of America's primary and secondary schools. The status quo will not stem the tide of AIDS in Africa or vanquish the now constant threat of terrorism in every corner of the world, including our corner. But as MIT graduates, as educated men and women, you have a responsibility to question the status quo in an informed, fact-based manner. It is your passion and compassion that will drive you. But to make a difference, you also need clear eyes and heads and the ability to objectively analyze the problems you care about. That is what can set you apart. That is what gives you the opportunity not only to ponder, but also to act, to dedicate your lives and work to important, worthwhile things. And when you think about the things you want to do, consider the entire world as your field of opportunity. In other words, live in the world as well as in your own nation. You are citizens of the world as well as citizens of the United States or China or Iran or Italy or wherever you were born or gained citizenship. Each of you shares the earth with every other human being. In this troubled time, there is a continual tension between fragmentation and integration. The very electronic communications that we develop here at MIT connects us to each other as never before in human history. But simultaneously, we seem to be fragmenting into increasingly more isolated geographical, economic, political, religious, or cultural enclaves. We stare at each other with suspicion rather than with welcoming. We accuse rather than enlightening. We raise walls rather than open doors and open minds. Integration, mutual respect, and mutual understanding must, in the end, win out over fragmentation and isolation. But that will not happen by default. That will happen only if we use our minds and our actions to create a spirit and a reality of openness. The cornerstone on which great American research universities are built is openness. Openness of our national boundaries, and openness of our campuses to immigrants, visitors, students, faculty, and scholarly colleagues from all over the world. MIT, I'm proud to say, stands as a prime example. Our MIT Nobel laureates were born in the United States, Mexico, Germany, Italy, Japan, and India. Even our responsibility to protect those who live and learn and work on our campus and in these United States 
protect them from the reality of terrorism must not undermine this enriching and empowering openness. MIT will continue to work aggressively and effectively with our federal government to develop and implement sound policies that will keep our colleges and our universities open to international students and scholars and that will allow open and productive scientific communication and collaboration among international colleagues. I ask that each of you join us in that important mission. But world citizenship extends beyond these important concerns. It extends to a deep understanding of the fact that we all inhabit the same Earth, that our every action affects people in far-flung parts of the world, and that their actions in turn affect us. We must not be blind to evil or to real threats, and they must be countered but they are best countered by making common cause. Force has its place, but so do humility and the forging of collective efforts based on shared values and cultural reality. Share your talents. The best way to forge collective efforts is to share your talents, and they are legion. And you have honed many of them in important ways during your days at MIT but they are not yours alone. Society is entrusted to talented people such as you. There is a world to feed, energy to be provided, natural resources to be used efficiently and wisely, human communication and learning to be improved. Good health and security need to be spread across the lands, and this can only happen by your sharing your talents. Commune with all people. Now, sharing is both easier and more effective if you can see yourself as part of the greater world community, embracing all the variety and richness of the different cultures have to offer. Every survey we make of MIT students and graduates shows that you greatly value the, diverse, the diversity of friends and colleagues you got to know here. In all that you do, you should be steady friends and bold companions. Friendship in both personal and global sense cannot come or go at the wisp of a moment. There is both beauty and practicality in enduring companionship and dialogue. It is on such enduring friendships that productive societies are built. And it is from such relationships as they continue through the changes of time and changes of events that wisdom comes. But be bold companions as well. Progress comes from such boldness in the context of common values and aspirations. And so as you embark on the next stage of your journey, I offer this now traditional charge to you the graduates of MIT. Ponder the unthinkable, question the status quo, live in the world as well as in your own nation, dream of a better future, but contribute to the present, share your talents, commune with all people, be steady friends and bold companions, Address the truly important issues of your time. Be honest in all that you do. Take your education, your talent, and your energy, and build a nation and a world community that consider knowledge a gift to be shared, a healthy planet a place to be cherished, and human dignity and opportunity fundamental conditions to be enjoyed by all people. Men and women of MIT, I wish you Godspeed and the very best of good fortune. Thank you, President Vest, and thank you and Becky 
for your dedicated and inspiring leadership of MIT during the past 14 years. By virtue of the authority delegated to them by the Corporation of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and on the recommendation of the faculty, President Vest will now present the following degrees. Bachelor of Science. Bachelor of Science, Master of Science. Bachelor of Science, Master of Engineering and the advanced degrees for the School of Science and Whitaker College of Health Sciences and Technology. Provost Brown will present the advanced degrees for the School of Architecture and Planning, the School of Engineering, the School of Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences, and for the Sloan School of Management. Thank you. <laughs> As they approach the ramp, undergraduate degree recipients will be greeted by the chancellor, the dean for student life, and the dean for graduate education, undergraduate education. Graduate degree recipients will be greeted by the school deans. The first graduates to be recognized are the class marshals who are seated on the stage. Recognition will now be given to the officers of the class of 2004 and the officers of the Graduate Student Council who are seated on the stage. Maria E. Hidalgo, president of the class of 2004, is awarded the degree of Bachelor of Science as recommended by the Department of Mechanical Engineering. Matthew N. Staczynski, treasurer of the class of 2004, is awarded the degree of Bachelor of Science in Economics and Bachelor of Science in Mathematics. R. Eric Caulfield, president of the Graduate Student Council, is pursuing the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Michael R. Folkert, vice president of the Graduate Student Council, is pursuing the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Bachelor of Science diplomas will now be presented to students in the School of Architecture and Planning who have completed the specified degree requirements. Bachelor of Science in Art and Design, Carrie A. Brown. Advanced degree diplomas will now be presented to students in the School of Architecture and Planning who have completed the specified degree requirements. Master of Architecture, Joshua R. Berenden. Priscilla Del Castillo. Rory C. DeHau. Elizabeth B. Evans. Kristen C. Gasper. Simon J. Halpern. Anthony L. Geraldo. Stephanie I. Shu. Jason W. Hart. Serena K. Hu. Aliki M. Haziotis. Monique A. Johnson. Kyung Yong Kwan. Philip M. Kelleher. Tom Lee. Christine Lin. Michael P. Lehner. Lisa J. Mrozik. Rebecca M. Luther. Catherine R. Nichols. Aaron Manalaric. Atif Z. Kathur. Andrew T. Marcus. Athan D. Rodriguez. Melissa E. Marsh. Mary A. Rodriguez. Brian A. Miller. Cynthia Serna. Robert L. Morgan. Sarah S. Shin. Susan T. Morgan. Amanda P. Smith. Carl P. Munkelwitz. Lisa C. Smith. Georgi I. Petrov. Joyce C. Wang. Sabrina C. Schmidt Wedekam. Chin Yen Wong. Michael Spinello. Bachelor of Science in Planning. Sarah A. Kershaw. Kyle R. Steinfeld. 
Thunder S. Van Brocklin. Pearl Thuy Wan Tang. Bachelor of Science diplomas will now be presented to students in the School of Engineering who have completed the specified degree requirements. Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering, Anna M. Albier. Master of Science in Architecture Studies, Javier Arbona. Anne E. Alvarado. Said A. Arida. Jaslyn L. Carvajal. Stilianos Dritzas. Amy Dandola. Eleanor B. Fawcett. Andrew H. Fraser. Karu Fang. Jessica A. Hector. Victor Gain. Jedediah H. Horn. Christopher M. Gashohe. Roberta L. Su. Hainan Khan. Jad S. Karam. James S. Johnson III. Lyle Paladin Tripp. Samir Keshep. Leslie A. Robinson. Christiana I. Raber. Salvatore Scaturo Jr. Noah S. Resnick. Edgar A. Torres. Omar Saad. Chakrapan Twata. Rita F. Saad. Elizabeth N. Wayman. Jennifer C. Seeley. Bachelor of Science in Environmental Engineering Science. Lara C. Davenport. Gonzalo D. Suarez. Aisha Ergeman. James R. Tishner. Nina Chetri. Jeremy P. Voorhees. Brian M. Liu. Alejandro Zulas Castellanos. Laura Rubiano Gomez. Master in City Planning, Ning Ai. Amanda K. Sorensen. James W. Alexander, Jr. Lisa M. Walters. Izgu B. Alcan. Jessica L. Wargo. Elizabeth S. Bast. Teresa K. Yamana. Alvaro Covarrubias. Suzanne E. Young. Eric W. Ekman. Bachelor of Science as recommended by the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. Adriana Rodriguez. Crystal A. England. Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering. Camilo A. Aladro. Benjamin K. Foreman. Alexander L. Allen. Darlene E. Gallant. Cameron M. Bass. Megan C. Fennelly. Gabriel G. Blanton. Jeffrey P. Haber. Jordan B. Bryanov. Christopher J. Hodges. Dylan B. Chavez. Kelly J. Houston. Angela Y. Chen. Andrew M. Jakobovics. Helena N. Chai. Jennifer B. Kaminsky. Margaret H. Cho. Christopher J. Kiley. Danielle S. Chow. Aaron B. Kilmer Neal. Emily E. Kofer. Linda A. Kim. Tisok C. Cruz Gonzalez. Julie B. Kirschbaum. Sarah L. Day. Robert T. Kor. Michael R. Delzio. Noriko Komiyama. Eric A. Dominguez. Rajendra Kumar. Jeffrey F. Ebling. Tara Kumar. Rory E. Foster. Stephen R. Leonard. Freddie R. Funnes. David J. Mesenton. Terry A. Gage. Adam T. Metzger. Benjamin H. Gallup. Carlos J. Montanez. Jonathan S. Gibbons. Jumanya M. Nabti. Gabriel J. Gonzalez. Andrew R. Port. Aaron A. Griswold. Amelia L. Raven. Li Wei Ho. David J. Riche. Aaron L. Halt. Tracy Seya. Peiwa B. Wong. Susan Seidinger. Bennett T. Ito. Carolina N. Seaman. Richard A. James. Martha Tai. Susan Y. G. Harini Venkatesh. Christopher J. Khan. Georgetta Vidikan. Samuel N. Korb. Liaza H. Vincent. Michael O. Kurd. Zoe R. Weinrobe. Andrew J. Kutas. Annis Whitlow. Leonardo F. Marmorato. Andrew H. Whittemore. Louis F. Morales Benitez. Master of Science in Urban Studies and Planning, Juan C. Arredondo Brun. Mohamed J. Noor. Marta I. Bonilla Penalosa. Sean P. O'Neill. Ricardo Gonzalez Yera. Lyle U. Odner. Y. Kin Lee. Aaron J. Parnes. Shahid S. Nanavati. Nicholas R. Pauli. Master of Science in Media Arts and Sciences, James J. Dye. 
Jose G. Ramirez. Sheil S. Tande. Melissa B. Reed. Hong Chen Ma. Evencio A. Rosales. David J. Merrill. Brian P. Ruddy. Nilo Mukherjee. Justin E. Rooflin. Ethan L. Perry. Sam R. Sarcia. Hayes S. Raffle. Tina Shi. Michael N. Rosenblatt. Thomas J. Slow. Andrew J. Sempre. Moon Hee Son. Earl J. Wagner. Maria E. Tanner. Oren Zuckerman. Lauren E. Sai. Master of Science in Media Technology, Karen K. Louis. Jessica Tse. Master of Science in Real Estate Development, James A. Foley. Sedna Chikata. Master of Science without specification of field, Paul G. Altador. Elliot B. Vasquez. Su Shen Chang. Don M. Wendell. Emmanuel Mongia Tapia. Bachelor of Science as recommended by the Department of Mechanical Engineering. <coughs> Courtney A. Brown. Simon K. Schiesel. Melissa S. Kane. Doctor of Philosophy with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto, Thomas G. Beischer. Roy K. Isaki. Tanzim K. Chaduri. Larry E. Hall II. Richard W. Duvall. Brendan T. Madigan. Raul Fernandez. Vanessa I. Pena. Benjamin J. Fry. Alessandra M. Sabelli. Richard L. O'Brien. Stephen B. Samujos. Brent A. Ridley. David W. Shera. Altino J. Roca. Jenny Ta. Smita Srinivas. Kristen E. Wolf. Hei Yun H. Ching. Bachelor of Science in Material Science and Engineering. Miguel A. Caez Bernabe. Jeet Chang Zai. Devon C. Charlton. Advanced degree diplomas will now be presented to students in the School of Engineering who have completed the specified degree requirements. Master of Engineering in Civil and Environmental Engineering, Mohan K. Akula. Tanya Y. Cheng. Matthew B. Andrews. Heather R. Feynman. Krista A. Beesing. Whitney B. Gaynor. Pamela M. Shaheen. Timmy T. Hong. Carmen Chok. Yuki Hori. Emilie C. Coste. Nicole F. Howe. Patricia A. Crumley Alvarez. Chuan He H. Shung. Tarek N. Dajani. Howe Hu. Fernando G. Degwitz. Kathleen R. Huffman. Corey S. Donison. Frederick J. Kim. David B. Gottlieb. Christopher C. Kinney. Tamar S. Keevil. Jenny A. Lichter. Ray Z. Kordahi. Angie C. Lin. Evan M. Lapointe. P. Han Lin. Alejandro Macheras. Celia E. Macias. Colin R. O'Shea. Corrine E. Packard. Alexander Otanti. Anna V. Ramos. Guillaume Rousseau. Paul C. Sandon. Artesa N. Saldivar Sali. Michelle E. Seitz. Katarina Santoso. Mariana Schneiderman. Vishal Saxena. Kristen A. Sunter. Andrea Scotti. Catherine A. Tweedy. Sapna D. Tayagi. Diana J. Wu. Richard C. Anru III. Ian J. Ibarra. Master of Science in Civil and Environmental Engineering. Ang Siu Ao. Bo Zhao. William B. Bennett III. Bachelor of Science as recommended by the Department of Material Science and Engineering. Timothy J. Dawson. Sivaram M. Chikirala. Heidi L. Rocha Lopez. Aaron C. Chow. Clarice A. Sang. Javier H. Flores Cervantes. Bachelor of Science in Archaeology and Materials as recommended by the Department of Material Science and Engineering. Leslie D. Frame. Julie M. Herman. Bachelor of Science in Electrical Science and Engineering. Rahul Agrawal. Jun Hilano. Diana Albaran Velasquez. Takashi Kashima. Christopher P. Anderson. Seha Kim. Jeremy R. Arnold. Masashi Kojima. Alfred C. Ashford III. 
Blake J. Landry, Stephanie Key Balster, Anne F. Lightbody, Murat M. Basaron, Mason G. Maneso, Michael S. Bradley, Juan Marcini Blanco, Claudio M. Brasca, Gitanjali Mital, Kristen M. Carr, Michael E. Panessa, Carrie W. Chen, Jiangyang Pai, Albert Chen, Edmund Sassim, Flora T. Chu, Allison I. Sleeth, Clifford O. Shute, Hiroshi Taguchi, Jennifer M. Clay, Brian B. Tan, Mark Joel M. Crazon, Pere Andreu Ubac de Fuentes, Nikila Deo, Master of Science in Mechanical Engineering, Yonggil An, Joseph Duncan, Theodoros Akiskolos, Christopher F. Forker, Matthew Bernier, Emily B. Fox, Jennifer T. Blundo, Nitsan Gadish, Thomas A. Bowers, Meredith L. Gerber, Brian Chan, Nathan F. Hanagami, Stephen K. Charles, Brian D. Hemond, Shi Chi Chen, Deborah E. Hong, Vincent S. Costanzo, Askia A. Howell, Karen A. Davis, Chen Wen Huang, Suraj S. Deshmukh, Bradley C. Cantor, Douglas E. Eastman IV, Brandon R. Cam, Ekram A. Esman, Danish S. Katri, Jorge M. Ferre, Leanne Kim, Sawyer B. Fuller, Kartik S. Lomba, Palamarugan Ganesan, Andrew J. Lysison, Joshua A. Goldwitz, Hanway Lee, John M. Gray, Rodrigo Luna, Tiffany A. Grood, Samia A. Majab, Mauricio R. Gutierrez, Zachary J. Malchano, Luke A. Horaiter, Mateusz K. Malinowski, Ziga Ivanich, Uttara P. Marti, Leona A. Carnali, Ali S. Melli, Darcy C. Kelly, Jose A. Mendez, Ahmed S. Khalil, William F. Merrick, Chiwon Kim, Peter F. Mitros, Jamie N. Kofoid, Joseph Patrick Michael Motion Champana, Kevin R. Lang, Ricky Muller, He Jin Lee, Nicholas R. Nessel, Oscar Lopez, Song He C. Pak, Peter J. Mack, Matthew J. Park, Vikram S. Mangalgiri, John G. Puskaric, Kipti R. Mansukani, Carlos A. Renhifo, Devin B. McCombie, Noel I. Reyes Gonzalez, Adam D. Mulliken, Pablo G. G. J. Rios, Jean Kun O, oh. Michael D. Seaman, Janine E. Pierce, Andrew D. Selbst, Michael H. Roberts, David M. Signoff, Vinayak Roy, David J. Simmons, Sanoz Sachi, Elena A. Smith, Timothy P. Scott, Terence R. Strader, Ashish A. Shah, Dennis G. Vandeste, Philip A. Schaltis, Christophorus C. Vasilio, Vijay Shilpia Kandula, Laura A. Waller, Maya Shore, Annie I. Wang, Grant M. Smedley, John J. Wang, Jonathan Y. Smith, James R. Warren III, Andrew K. Stimmick, Lee D. Weinstein, Stofi Tarud, Colin Welton Wu, Mary K. Thompson, Tahid R. Zaman, Carissa D. Tudrin, Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, Kweku O. Abraqua, Chip D. Vaughn IV, Nathan J. Ackerman, Eric R. Wade, Ahmed B. Adam, Jason W. Wheeler, Jean B. Almanord, Yong Chow, Brian C. Anderson, Twin Twe Tuo, Yuan E. Angele, Master of Science in Material Science and Engineering, Benjamin J. Brue, Tin Lan Ao, Apostolos Kundras, Sanjesh Bugaria, Carolyn K. Lowe, Joshua W. Barretts, Edward S. Park, Jean Maria Barnwell, Michael J. Tarkanian, Eric Z. Berry, Master of Engineering in Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, James W. Anderson, Vimal Balodia, 
Basil R. Anwar. Neha Bushan. Keith V. Batachi. Bryce B. Bingman. Matthew W. Bellotti. Brian A. Blumenkopf. Catherine E. Butler. Charles F. Cadieu. Joseph E. Corral. Isaac C. Cameron. Ethan A. Crane. Adam S. Champy. Samuel I. Davies. Chong Chan. Shorav R. Day. Gary S. Chan. Stanislav Funiak. Howard F. Chan. Dipali Garg. Catherine E. Chang. And Timothy L. Gerhardt. Terry Y. Chow. David I. Galan. Ado A. Chaduri. Naveen Goela. Jiawan Chen. Jeffrey S. Halbig. Kathy F. Chen. Joseph R. Hastings. Margaret M. Cheng. Catherine A. Havasi. Jimmy Chung. Andrew W. Hogue. Emily T. Chi. Stephen M. Howe. Yu Hon Chin. Richard C. Hugh. Margaret J. Chung. Jacob A. Hyman. Nidia M. Clayton. Ryan G. Jezayeri. Francisco U. Cruz. Xian K. Brandon L. Dell. Mayor V. Kenya. Parul Diora. Jonathan D. Kennel. Neil U. Desai. Siddiqui Khan. Maya Dobashkaya. Jeffrey G. Clan. Carlos I. Dorta Quinones. Raj Krishnan. Nicole Dre. Vitali Y. Kulikov. Michelle A. Duval. Bradford S. Lassie. Adam M. Eames. Stuart S. Laval. Christine P. Fleming. Zachary A. Lavalley. Andrew C. Francis. Brian Long. Nicholas R. Fung. Soyini D. Laverde. Karenina, Karenina Garcia Espendez. Sean Lee. Jason A. Gift. Manwe M. Louis. Rodney K. Graham. Brett J. Lockyer. Patrick R. Griffin. Corey R. Lawrence. Sachin N. Gupta. Shah Ma. Derek L. Harris. Catherine A. Matlin. Michael J. Harvey. Patrick M. McKaney. Anita A. Hegde. Jeffrey C. Mellon. George K. Hemming. Michael D. Metzger. Richard Hernandez. David L. Milliner. Michael Ho. Arjun R. Narawanasawami. Jameson R. Hope. Waylon Nee. Victor W. Shu. Atish D. Nigam. Victoria Shu. James B. Uwe. Jonathan C. Hyler. Juan C. Reyes Gutierrez. Joseph D. Jacobs. Daniel R. Roth. Kiarash Javanmardian. Aurora C. Schmidt. Charles June. P. Seyumpururat. Kevin M. Jones. Jonathan Sheffy. Rupesh K. Rupesh R. Kantham. Fumiyaki Shiraishi. Stephen J. Kao. Youngbin Son. Tushara C. Karunaratna. Wana L. Stamatoyu. Charles W. Kiho. Joseph C. Stark III. Christopher M. Kalashian. OJ Sudan. Erdem M. Kisiman. Brian D. Tang. Bo S. Kim. Seth R. Tardif. Uriel P. Klieger. Natabude Tiratan. Huria Komal. Andrew J. Thomas. Kimberly S. Kuo. Kang K. Twong. Tin H. Kwao. Dayi D. Wan. Jesse M. Lassica. Wei Jin Wang. Nelson D. Lai. Kevin T. Weston Jr. Hianju J. Lee. Jeremy N. Wong. Sean J. Leonard. Gina A. Yi. Yuan Li. Reka Yoko. Albert Lin. Beja Zong. Louis F. Lopez. Master of Science in Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, Desmond C. Adler. Kiran J. Madhav. Karun Bakshi. Matthew B. Malcolm. Alicia D. Boozer. Concheta A. Maratta. Shashibushan P. Borade. Benjamin J. Marin. Cynthia L. Karamana. Ian S. Martin. Liang Yu Chen. 
Josue Mateo. Julia V. Klein. Marius Michalakis. Brooke A. Cowan. Arthur Musa. Rupa Das. David L. Nelson. Timote B. Dutrio. James K. Noonan. Saikat Guha. Daniel A. Noons. Anjali Gupta. Sebastian Ortiz. John J. Hennessy. Anand B. Patel. Tyrone F. Hill. Garrett D. Peavy. Jessica A. Howe. Joshua S. Peters. Wei Han Huang. Paul T. Pham. Tomash Ijo. Brian S. Ferris. Robert A. Jensen. Samuel J. Prentice. Amir E. Kandani. Alan Rabinovich. Ashish J. Kisti. Ravi Raghavan. Jung Won Kim. Rauhit N. Rao. Stephen M. Cohen. Shima Rayed. Sean S. Kuo. Michael A. Rebez. Yi Shu Vivian Lei. Daniel S. Relihan. Dai Yun Lim. Philip S. Ra. Jessica A. Loparo. Sarah S. Ree. Nicholas Maliska. Benjamin L. Roberts. Soyumayejit Mandol. Ruben J. Rodriguez. Aaron J. Maneri. James M. Rowey. Stephen A. McCammont. Birendro M. Roy. Osama F. Nafi. Daniel M. Roy. David A. New. Kathleen M. Rubritz. Francis M. O'Sullivan. Tara N. Sinoff. Olumuyiwa T. Ogonika. Michael J. Salib. Chi Young Park. Gailey F. Saliba. Emil A. Patel. Iti Samuel. Jana D. Powell. Mina L. Shaw. Siddharth Ray. Saad Z. Shakshir. Scott E. Rhodes. Nidhi Sharma. Sarah J. Rodriguez. James P. Skelly. Jason A. Sears. David M. Smith. Wacharapan Suan Santisuk. Rasmin Suebjipto. Kenneth W. Taylor. Brian A. Stubbe. Catherine A. Thorne. Jim Suka. Laura C. Tiefenbrook. Eric T. Siu. Jonathan R. Tischler. Eric C. Tack. Gregory J. Tomazak. Ran Tao. Anne M. Vitayatil. Michael A. Terry. Aisha N. Walcott. Ekarat Titimon. Beisho Ye. Jonathan Tipamas. Murtaza A. Zafar. Judy Tsai. Master of Science in Chemical Engineering Practice. Peter A. Colvin. Eric G. Tung. Danan J. Dendokuri. Nathan H. Van Zelfti. Smit P. Deshmuk. Anjali A. Verges. Sashwat Ghosh. Christopher A. Vokla. Jared K. Johnson. Riyad S. Wabi. Amy S. Lewis. Jeremy Z. Walker. Mohit Rawat. Kevin J. Wang. Ajawai Selat. Stephen Y. Wang. Brian C. Stevenson. Rupert N. Webb. Master of Science in Ocean Engineering, Yasun I. Hajakas. Keith J. Winstein. Joseph R. Curran. Amanda V. Vozniak. Jessica M. Donnelly. Jia J. Wu. Hui Min Charles Lo. Kayon Shu. Carl Magnus W. McCletchy. Chen Yang. Kostas Pelakanakis. Dai K. Yi. Master of Science in Naval Architecture and Marine Engineering, Naval Construction and Engineering, Christian R. Brown. Chris Yu. Wenhua A. J. Tao Yu. Gregory M. Tozi. Barris Yuxel. <laughs> Master of Science in Ocean Systems Management, Peter H. Connor. Michael A. Zivich. Eric L. Dresser. 
Helen Zhu. Leon S. Patitsas. Kari L. Zhu. Richard A. Smith. Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and Engineering, Modepe A. Adeleye. Master of Science in Aeronautics and Astronautics, Omer Essen. Jason B. Alonzo. Abran Alaniz. Lance B. Anderson. Mehdi Aligambari. Alexander Andoni. Sean G. Bednars. Ko Aramensa. Louis S. Brager. Sarah D. Bissonette. Paul J. Calhoun. Nathan J. Boy. Stephanie S. Chiesi. Michael A. Brown. Bunse Chu. Brent P. Budensee. Hector Theria Suarez. Omari Carter Thorpe. Emily M. Craparo. Timothy Chan. Joseph M. Dorcaluque. Chaitra Chandrasekhar. Edward H. Fong. Danjie Chen. Lucas J. Fortier. Catherine C. Chen. David Grattan. Lu Xiao Chen. Che Yung Andrew Ye. William K. Chen. Antoine G. Jerusalem. David R. Cheng. Alf Kohler. Michelle K. Cheng. Julian A. Lamamy. Stephanie C. Chu. Tiffany R. Lapp. Howard H. Cho. David S. Lazara. Alex C. Chung. Hong Li. Sharon B. Cohen. David M. Lobosco. Lawrence W. Colagiovanni. Richard H. Lyon. David R. Coleman. Alexi Manaville. Christopher M. Cornell. Megan L. Mitchell. Samuel I. Deitch. Alexandra L. Mostanovska. John S. Danaher. Carl E. Namey. Anthony M. Deganji. Martin Wime. Margaret Douglas. Stephen C. Pascal II. Aidan R. Downs. Ryan E. Peoples. Samuel F. Elder. Vincent P. Perot. Carlos E. Ancalada. Ryan L. Pettit. Michael P. Ferry. Arthur W. Poon. Miguel C. Ferreira. Todd E. Schumann. Brian W. Fink. Anna Silbovitz. Joy M. Forsyth. Jason T. Smith. Clifford A. Fry. Anand Srinivas. Fred F. Gao. Jayakant Srinivasan. Ricardo A. Garcia. K. U. Sullivan. Jason R. Goggin. Daniel S. Tam. Jonathan A. Goler. Adim S. Usman. Elena Groberman. Andrew T. Vaughn. Jason W. Hung. Michael P. Voitman. Fari Jahanmir. Weldon B. Wilhite, Jr. Lucy L. Jin. Phone Zhou. Dongho Kang. Master of Science in Nuclear Engineering, Barrett A. Burns. William M. Kiker. Michael J. Delaney. Anthony H. Kim. Yuichiro Inoue. Daniel D. Kim. Douglas M. Lemon. Patrick Y. Kim. Master of Engineering in Biomedical Engineering, Christopher J. Bettinger. Jacob O. Kitzman. Jianwen Wendy Gu. Man Yak Ko. Yasunori Hashimura. Terry Y. Ku. Brent M. Schreiber. Robert M. Kotridis. David Yin. Rasika S. Kumar. Master of Engineering in Logistics, Arzum E. Akas. Jacqueline A. Lai. Nancy J. Arshambo. Jawad Laraki. Ross Beinecker. Christopher L. Ledger. Yishai Boasan. Sonam Lakey Dorji. Marcos E. Buelvas. Iwan Tudor Leu. 
David I. Cassett. Christopher K. Leung. Ji Fen Zhou. Yao Li. Dina S. Disraeli. Joanna J. Liang. Xiao Chin Dong. Percy S. Liang. Herbert Fonseca. Walton W. Lin. Antoine Guiton. Jennifer Liu. Christopher W. Hopeman. Steve S. Liu. Tatsuya Inaba. Daniel A. Loretta Oropesa. Akihiro Kaga. Tazin Matab. Temur Khan. Michael I. Mendel. John D. Canley. Ryan A. Manuel. Sonita Lonto. Corey Y. McLean. Yurlan Y. Manateyev. Austin C. McNerlin. Rose Q. May. Matthew Messenger. John C. Parsons. Michael Y. Moon. Roberto J. Perez Franco. Enrique A. Munoz Torres. John R. Polito. Aman Narang. Madhu Ranjan. Pallavi Naresh. Nathan C. Roost. Leah L. Oates. Duncan M. Schultz. Adam J. Oliner. Jared M. Schreiber. Timothy D. Olson. Theodore Simeonov. Akshay R. Patil. Gabriel Dev Singh. Andrew J. Perelson. Elearn Tay. Jake C. Pinato. Richard M. Tonui. Maxwell E. Plank. Kong She. Merrick Polonsky. Chiu Shu. Elizabeth I. Powers Boyle. Li Hua Zhai. Tyler S. Quintmire. Georgi Z. Zhelev. Asfandiar Qureshi. Master of Science in Bioengineering, Jennifer J. Chang. Daniel R. Ramage. Daniel S. Erickson. Anthony P. Reinen. Master of Science in Engineering and Management, Nathan A. Clark. Ariel L. Rideout. John W. Falou. Daniel S. Roby. Ion C. Freeman. Rodell S. Rodriguez. John J. Gatti. Brian T. Rosenfeld. Badrinath N. Commander. Aishan Suchdev. Ramasundar Krishna Swami. Javed K. Samuel. Jeffrey P. Langos. David P. Saylor. Harris A. Lieber. Ariel E. Siegel. Daniel V. McInnes. Yanis Sermullins. John M. Penny. Alp Simsek. Jacob V. Pretorius. Jesse M. Smithnoski. Daniel J. Rinkevich. Stephen M. Stern. Timothy A. Rush. Wei Fong Sun. Frederick P. Sampson. Alexandra M. Salag. Prashant A. Shirolkar. Constance Y. Tao. Nishi Singh. Christopher J. Taylor. Pei Wong. Andrew E. Sai. Samuel K. Weinstein. Pius A. Uzumir II. James E. Weisheit. Peter D. Van Buskirk. Master of Science in Technology and Policy, Michael W. Adams. Rui L. Viana Filho. Colleen B. Akerst. Gerardo Viedma Nunez. Anup P. Bandivadakar. Emily C. Vincent. Swati Chaturvedi. Paul A. Wanda. Shin Wee Shuang. Benjamin L. Wang. Thomas E. Curry. Yufei Wang. Gregoire B. Ferre. Matthew H. Wilkerson. Flora Garcia. Brian F. Williams. Anelos B. Hezen. David A. Wilson. Daiso Ikeda. Joseph Y. Wong. Vishwanath Kanda. Christopher C. Wirtz. Sandra J. Kassin Deerdorf. Joshua S. Yardley. Shaheen Malik. Tamara H. Yu. Maria Isabel A. Neto. Da Chung Zhao. 
Carlos A. Osorio Urzuha. David P. Ziegler. Juliet L. Outen. Enrique Zolezzi. Adam M. Smith. Bachelor of Science in Chemical Engineering, Louis K. Abishamian Garcia. Benjamin F. Speed. Cynthia M. Adams. Master of Science in Toxicology, Guangzhou Chen. Gretchen K. Alex. Anup V. Rao. Sutha R. Amarnath. Catherine E. Wack. Pedro L. Arachaya. Master of Science in Transportation, Claudine Biagboku. James Q. Bedeker. Achilhendra S. Shohan. Cindy Chung. Nicoleos Dionash. Margo E. Daly. Diana M. Dorinson. Arushi M. DeFonseca. Thomas E. Hutchinson III. Raymond E. Flores Gonzalez. Fani Rama K. Jamala Madaka. Roy D. Gross. Jonathan R. Key. Monica W. Ho. Donovan M. Lauten. Tracy K. Sue. Miguel A. Molina Cicchetti. Christina G. Kaiser. Damien Raspel Gali. Alice S. Kaiseljuk. Sepper Sarmadi. Will R. Lai. Emily D. Sturzen. Shukai Lang. Master of Science without specification of field. Olaf Bleck. Denut A. Matish. Vijay S. Chowdhury. Vanessa A. Nadal. Sarah E. Cinnamon. Christiana O. Obiaya. Tariq A. Elagizi. David J. Aslan. Abdallah W. Jabur. Ruby Rabanshi. Hariharan Lakshmanan. Keith G. Reed. Jedediah B. Northridge. Asiya Salimadan. Deepak Ravichandran. Ines Sharafi. Nicholas A. Sabarin. Amy J. Shi. Charuleka Varadhajaran. Monica Sirkar. Jamie B. Workmeister. Kristen D. Smith. Cream Y. Yahia. Sarah E. Smith. Naval Engineer, Naval Construction and Engineering, Lynn A. Gish. Kristen N. Valenti. William L. Hardman. Wei Chung M. Wang. Julie A. Kichenka. Yun Ling Wang. Jack S. Ramsey, Jr. Bachelor of Science as recommended by the Department of Chemical Engineering, Nenya L. EGB. Jason L. Rhodes. Allison Gallo. Michael L. Roach. David W. Jackson. Karalambos K. Sultatis. Soraya M. Scroggins. Diana Wolfson. Bachelor of Science in Ocean Engineering, Jeremy D. Chambers. Doctor of Science with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto, Dominic Asimaki. Matthew B. Greytak. Sharia Avtar. Johanna L. Matthew. Benny Butterman. Brian M. Miller. Virginia L. Curran. Catherine S. Wasserman. Osung Kwan. Bachelor of Science in Aerospace Engineering, Douglas L. Allaire. Robert V. Leslie. Ian G. Bliss. Efrat Most. Jesus A. Bolivar. Karen L. Noyes. Amy A. Bonner. Hong Chi. Megan P. Brett. Chi Wei Wong. Benjamin M. Brooks. Doctor of Philosophy with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Pablo M. Acosta Serafini. Catherine W. Chang. Clark L. Allred. Madeline M. Close. Raimundo Aroyave. Amato G. De Hoyos. Solomon Asefa. Paula Echevri Mondragon. Yingbin Bao. Andrea L. Fanucci. Benjamin E. Barrows. Tanya C. Garza. Mark Bate. Christopher D. Graff. Benita Batachaje. Andrew G. Gregg. 
James R. Billenberg. Martin C. Jonicus. Chandra Shekhar Boyapati. Miguel Messias, Jr. Stefan J. Bratu. Kathleen M. McCoy. Kimberly A. Bryan. Melanie A. Miller. Douglas D. Cannon. Anna M. Muracek. Albert M. Chan. Rosa E. Obergon. Wu S. Chang. Douglas J. Quattrochi. Frederick W. Chen. Matthew G. Richards. Gingwei Chen. Robin Ridal. Song Ho Cho. Dominic A. Rizzo. Dong Wong Choi. Juan I. Rodriguez. Ji Young Choi. Cassandra M. Rodriguez. Nu Wong Chalakup. Jason M. Saldana. Stefano Cotarolo. Benjamin S. Solish. Barbara M. Cutler. Philip N. Springman. Shamik Das. Glenn P. Turnier. Who's that? I already called it. Stefano Cutarola. Adrian E. Townsend. Barbara M. Cutler. Charles T. Wesley. Shamik. Namiko Yamamoto. Douglas Dakudo. Luke G. Zimmerman. Nuria Demas Valls. Bachelor of Science in Aerospace Engineering with Information Technology. Julie A. Arnold. Keith H. Duggar. David A. Braniatowski. Rebecca B. Dupay. Devjit Chakravarti. Layla M. Elias. Lania M. De Silva. Terence P. Fan. Victoria B. Davis. Dora Farkash. Timothy Demuri. Francisco J. Feminia. Georgine M. Hill. Cecilia A. Fernandez. Lisa R. Maseri. Timothy M. Finnegan. Chinuiche P. Yenke. Mark A. Foltz. Joshua T. Willette. Nicole M. Gasparini. Samira S. Ponda. Jeremy R. Gregory. Lindsay R. Price. Timothy Hanlon. Shen Chu. Yawu Hao. Bryant A. Roberts. Mary J. Height. Maria E. Steitler. Bart S. Hendricks. Margaret V. Stringfellow. Tracy C. Ho. Darlene A. Utter. Zhong Wu Kong. Jack E. Williard. Wenke Shao. Alan D. Wu. Yoming Shi. Bachelor of Science in Nuclear Engineering. Matthew D. Eichley. Michael D. Johnson. Newt J. Gazelius. Ryan E. Jones. William B. Kennedy. Nishla H. Kaiser. Bachelor of Science diplomas will now be presented to students in the School of Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences who have completed the specified degree requirements. Bachelor of Science in Economics, Alexander V. Batishas. Sean K. Kelly. Lisa Bell. Ryan J. Kirshner. Georgiana A. Sapoyo. Sifraz Orshid. Hogan Chen. Ho Jong Kim. Cho Song Chen. Jong Kim. Andrea L. Crandall. Song Jun Kim. Jesse Q. Ding. Lily Y. Koo. Jeffrey L. Greenbaum. Joanna L. Kulik. Jonathan R. Harris. Jan Lammerding. Hans A. Holter. Thomas M. Lancaster. David M. Kang. Janice A. Lancita. Ann E. Lee, member of the class of 2004 Executive Committee. Jin Lee. 
Cody B. Lung. Moses Lisra. Matthew R. Levy. Hong Yi Lu. Murdian M. Mladian. Nicole S. Love. Nicholas A. Krause. Junfin Ma. Leah K. Primo. Heather J. McLean. Tao Chu. Peter G. Madden. Nirupama S. Rao. Chris A. Marionetti. Jonathan I. Resnick. David M. Marini. Karen A. Ritter. Youssef M. Marsouk. David G. Seif. Deborah L. Mascaro. Chirag G. Shah. Lisa M. McGill. Joshua E. Sung. Samuel D. Mertens. Chloe J. Turgeman. Katerina S. Middleford. James G. Exnakis. Yonki Min. Jacqueline T. Yen. Maria Minkoff. Bachelor of Science in Political Science, Caitlin E. Lewis. Jatin Misra. Bachelor of Science in Literature, Radia Q. Valier. Jeffrey D. Moser. Bachelor of Science in Music, Michael A. Fabio. Christopher D. Moss. Pravin Kularaja. Muniti Suniti Mudgil. Catherine T. Olson. Jose Oscar Miranda. Bachelor of Science in Writing, Whitney E. Basil. Jonathan G. Mernick. Rachel E. Dillon. Timothy C. Neugebauer. Allison C. Lewis. Hai Ning. Lucy J. Vogel. Joe Pacheco, Jr. Bachelor of Science in Humanities, Priscilla M. Louie. Georgios V. Papayawanu. Bachelor of Science in Humanities and Engineering, Samuel Chang. Song Hoon Park. Mark B. Hertensteiner. Sung Bay Park. Aaron P. Morones. Kevin P. Pike. Mark Selig. Christopher S. Prats. Bachelor of Science in Humanities and Science, Ashley H. Kim. John S. Reed. Bachelor of Science in Linguistics and Philosophy, Melanie B. Getz. Tom G. Reynolds. Michelle E. Peters. Monica A. Rixman. Clarissa Y. Smith. John I. Rodriguez. Bachelor of Science in Comparative Media Studies, Miguel Rivera. Sandip Roy. Ray Visho. Jan Mateus Roll. Bachelor of Science diplomas will now be presented to students in the Sloan School of Management who have completed the specified degree requirements. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Management Science, Mahmoud S. Alaboud. Jacopo G. Sakieri. James J. Barnthouse. Vidi A. Saptari. Simon Bocanegra Teal. Alexander M. Sauerbudge. John L. Caluso. Nicholas Sabulidis. Amy C. Chan. Chari A. Savran. Chung Kit Chan. William A. Schmidt, Jr. Shirley Chan. Jiyong Song. Christine Chang, member of the class of 2004 Executive Committee. Charles K. Sestak. Kimberly G. Chow. Rebecca S. Shogo. Mindy H. Chow. Su Shen. Catherine H. Chen. Lawrence W. Shi. Cindy Chen. Jennifer H. Shen. Goodwin Chen. Carol V. Sidwell. Debbie Cheng. Yohim Sealer. Mickey W. Chang. Arnab T. Senra. Sarah B. Darcy. Jing Song. Shane R. Delmore. Christopher M. Spadaccini. Kyle T. Doherty. Atiwang Suchato. Gregory O. Edwards II. Hiroko Sudo. Jacob W. Faber. Patricia A. Sullivan. Jeanette D. Firstman. Aurelie Thiel. Alex D. Forrest. Michael T. Temko. Jacob W. Gibson. Jessica L. Townsend. Nikhil S. Gidwani. Christine H. 
Tall, Francesca E. Guido, Melinda M. Tupper, Ashish Gupta, Kevin T. Turner, Jonathan S. Hartafillis, Kripa K. Varanasi, Joseph B. Hom, Mandana Vaziri Farahani, Diana T. Huang, Luis F. Velasquez Garcia, James W. Humphreys III, Laurence Vijon Longlois, Jerry Ng, Alice Wang, Kavita Kadambi, Chongyun Wang, Lily Cam, Dean Wang, Tiffany A. Kanega, Jiyong Wang, David H. Leung, Jean Wang, Jacob L. Liebschutz, Jessica Wanasen, Daniel D. Liston, H. Sanath Vijasena, Patrick G. Lowe, Wang Yu Wu, Adrian M. Manns, Yu Hong Wu, Aulalia Masage, Jean Yi, Ryan G. McCoy, Ertan Yilmas, James M. Merwald III, Hanfeng Yuan, Jose T. Munoz, Xixin Zhang, Nisha Nath, Yi Zhang, Carolina Netolitska, Ting Zhu, Hai N. Nguyen, member of the class of 2004 Executive Committee. Todd C. Zian. Chantanu Nundi. Advanced degree diplomas will now be presented to students in the School of Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences who have completed the specified degree requirements. Master of Science in Political Science, Oliver H. Fritz III. Rashana Oza. Daniel B. Landau. Sanjeev Parekh. Master of Science in Science Writing, Eriko M. Guizzo. Elizabeth H. Park. Master of Science in Linguistics, Rebecca L. Norris. Mark A. Parton. Master of Science in Comparative Media Studies, Michael A. Epstein. <laughs> Lata V. Pasupuleti. Cristobal J. Garcia Herrera. Nicole C. Paul. Monica K. Ho. Serkan Peda. Susana R. Mandel. Myan Hyun E. Ra. Heather Miller. James N. Rochford. Doctor of Philosophy, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Kenichi Amaya. Lucas A. Ruprecht. Heather S. Gregg. Lauren M. Schiff. Samar Hajjaya. Daniel J. Serna. Rumen Herr. Benjamin M. Skolnick. Brett V. Kupacek. Yukela Subramonium. Chi Kyung Lee. Nilima Terdala. Jennifer M. Lind. Sarah M. Tenenbein. Frederick A. Link. Trisha H. Um. Nada Mora. William J. Watt. Ziad Nejmeldin. Johnny T. Yang. Rachel E. Prentice. Naja M. Yusuf. Rita M. Ramallo. Bachelor of Science diplomas will now be presented to students in the School of Science who have completed the specified degree requirements. Bachelor of Science in Chemistry, Namiko Abe. Joshua D. Ralph. Jeremy M. Baskin. Karen P. Rothkin. Robert H. Bach. Tracy N. Seslin. Daniel A. Bercovici. Nima T. Sofia. Elisa Calimano. Andrew T. Sweeting. Melissa J. Castile. Timothy S. Walters. Sarah W. Chan. Advanced degree diplomas will now be presented to students in the Sloan School of Management who have completed the specified degree requirements. Master of Business Administration, Sloan Fellows, Jose Anguita. Kamala V. Chang. Ki Wong Beck. Opera R. Dave. Augustine A. Balaguer. Catherine M. Duffy. Sun Yu Chong. Erica N. Ebo. Scott H. Crenshaw. Sherbin Fatehi. David A. Cunningham. Tae Wan B. Kim. Dana L. Cunningham. Jennifer A. Lee. 
Rebecca L. Davies. Jungmilk S. Lee. Carlos E. Duarte. Catherine A. Luke. Patrick D. Fleck. Rebecca L. McLaughlin. Koji Fujiwara. Neil P. Mankad. Donald P. Hilliard. Michelle K. Nain. Miguel E. Hoyos. Mark A. Selmeyer. Thomas C. Hutton. Amanda M. Stockton. Warren C. Johnson. Sonia C. Tang. Maxat Kabachev. Jyoti R. Tibawala. Naoshi Kansazaki. John S. Wallach. Jeho Kim. Adil R. Shagrelin. Naoki Kitamura. Bachelor of Science in Biology, Joshua P. Aronson. Kenneth D. Knight. Sasir Botha. Simon S. Quick. Philip J. Butler. David Laird Kulak. John T. Cardella. Yan Kwak Ikon Kwak Kim Yin. Christine E. Cassess. Xiao Lin. Andre Cassell. Andrea V. Lenz. Eunice J. Chang. Tehung Lu. Jennifer T. Chang. Michael F. McAllister. Jonathan D. Choi. Frank Mirasu. Neelish L. Chudasama. Jeffrey D. Moore. Kristen E. Cook. Mitra V. Nasabak. Gokan Demikran. Lucas J. Peterson. Christopher J. Emig. Jos Plessers. Anne Marie E. Faust. Luis R. Rezende Jr. Wei L. Feng. Gustavo J. Josho da Fonseca. Payel Garg. Shiv K. Shrestha. Catherine L. Garrison. Hu Kyung Sun. Dana L. Goldner. Katsuyuki Takaji. Sarah R. Gottfried. Jacqueline S. Townsend. Sergei R. Guma. Katya Von Riven. Daniel M. Halperin. Naohiko Yamamoto. Daniel S. Herman. Hiroshi Yasukawa. Jennifer A. Hip. Lionel H. Yo. Adrienne M. Irmer. David W. Ewan. Mindy Ju. Master of Science in Management Sloan Fellows. Sergio Martinez Ruel. Sherry C. Khan. Paul M. Perrin. Shireen S. Katrak. Yasutaka Suhiro. Teresa S. Kim. Master of Business Administration. Naosaka Abai. Jonathan C. King. Gino R. Abram. Ann K. Kloinvitter. Tolu O. Adele. Martin B. Kurtev. Elentina Adamaja. Diana L. Lam. Kasin Alom. Jung Un Lee. Lillian Notini D. Almeida. Pamela H. Lee. Richard M. Anthony. Michelle M. Liao. Lucas Aaron Quena. Cynthia Lien. Albert Arfanya. Nathan W. Liu. Jeffrey V. Aroni. Sean Liu. Ben F. Eiler. Joyce C. Lowe. Ramin Bogai. Catherine E. Lynch. Lakshmi Balachindra. Devdut Majamdar, member of the class of 2004 Executive Committee. Bevan Barbaric. Nadja Moji. Catherine T. Becker. Lorraine S. Meyer. Carlos Matthias A. Becker Nito. Melissa D. Mihelidakis. Carlos. Jennifer A. Miller. Again. Carlos Matthias Becker. Raymond R. Montoya II. Carlos H. Behrens. Eva L. Moses. Christopher J. Bell. Ellen L. Murphy. Stephen J. Bernier. Akhil Narang.
Stephen J. Bernier. Kenneth G. Nesmith, member of the class of 2004 Executive Committee. Vishant Bhatia. Michelle C. Page. Raina M. Bulji. Jasmine T. Perez. Joshua R. Binder. Rebecca R. Feftiher. Christopher D. Blois. Alana C. Pinkerton. Nancy S. Bon. Judith R. Pungor. Giam Buvar. Judy Ann B. Ramiskow. Mika Buvar. Joshua J. Riegelhaupt. Truman B. Bradley. Zachary C. Ruhi. James R. Brooks. Ross I. Runyon. Jeffrey T. Brown. Victor F. Sai. Robert G. Bruch, Jr. Vera D. Sajin. Michael M. Brylowski. Ashley L. Sanders. Eric C. Bu. Leah M. Sharp. W. S. Bush. Neil Sengupta. Robert S. Byrne. Mena M. Shaw. Eric J. Caballero. Lisa K. Silverman. Carlos F. Kisara. Sarah E. Simmons. J. C. Candomo. Irene S. Sonu. Michael S. Khan, Jr. Kelly Imanulo Okiahi M. Taylor. John A. Capello. Stephen D. Windsor. Scott P. Case. Chin Yi Wang. Marcelino Castrillo Garcia. Michael B. Wangchawak. Tuanji Ketla. Joseph L. Ye. Jen Lin Cham. Pon Shaw Ye. James Cham. Bob Yin. Alexander C. Chan. Bachelor of Science is recommended by the Department of Biology. Aiden Albayrock. Julia L. Chang. Jason M. Barron. John T. Chow. Marjan S. Balori. Juin Che. Danielle M. Gilbert. Ronald G. Chu. Kristen M. Gray. Jim Chow. Tony Leung. Marina Cigarini. Monica F. Morrison. Anna Marie Codina Varlek. Sonali Rudra. Alana A. Cohen. Smith Sirasakorn. J. A. Koisman. Jason H. Sun. Manuel Compion. Sheila H. Viswat Nathan. Andrew Kors. Jonathan S. White. Adam P. Cox. Peng Wu. Zoran Chernya. Yu Zhang. Susan M. Davidson. Bachelor of Science in Physics. Felipe R. Anziani. Fabio L. D'Souza. Laura E. Babcock. Indrani Deb. Victor W. Brar. Alexei V. Denisov. Jeffrey E. Brigham. Gregory D. Dibb. Martha W. Buckley. Eric P. Dykman. Catalina M. Butts. Christian A. Doheny. Zilong Chen. Sandra S. Durado. Robert W. Chung. Thomas A. Ernest. Laura D. Colon Melendez. Chad C. Eckes. Samuel T. Corradetti. Jeffrey R. Enquist. Joel C. Corbo. Eduardo Errania. Mara S. Daniel. Christopher A. Ettori. Nasser S. Demir. Chike Ferro. Cassia L. Dvorsi. Lucas R. Fernandez, Jr. Susan E. Dorsher. Deborah K. Finkel. Tali Dvorkis. David S. Flandro. Ansi J. Fakuri. Derek M. Flynn. John G. Folt. Brian J. Foley. Daniel R. Garcia. Karen E. Freeman. Megan S. Goldman. Yulia M. Franco. Edgar R. Gonzalez. Duncan K. Fung. Anne-Marie N. Granke. David Z. Galper. Benjamin D. Hugh. Anthony C. Gamble. Akash P. Consagra. Robert A. Garber. Yukien Lam. Juan A. Garcia Peredo. David A. Lepzelter. Matthew D. Gates. 
Laura A. Lopez, Shirley S. Geldfeld, Andrew B. Mamo, John C. Gibson, Erica L. McAvoy, Michael J. Goddard, Heather K. McEwen, Raylin Gong, Michael J. Mortensen, Francisco Gonzalez Meza Hoffman, Shankar Mukherjee, Carlos A. Gonzalez, Justin M. Nelson, Douglas M. Gordon, Sarah A. Nowak, James B. Graham, Shefali B. Oza, Stephen W. Griffiths, David C. Poland, Sanjay Grover, Aaron R. Rohde, Jonathan W. Gruber, John J. Shurin, Christopher R. Gruschinski, Charles A. Sievers, Armando J. Guerrero, Adrian O. Solis, Percival V. Guidat, Andrew C. Thomas, Chewan Guo, Anthony D. Weinbeck, Mark Hagen, Andrew T. Werner, Vincent W. Hahn, Russell J. Zonizer, Ramesh Heriharan, Ben Zhao, Doran Harlev, Bachelor of Science in Brain and Cognitive Sciences, Sandra J. Allison, Kichiro Hatakiyama, Punita Bansali, Peter T. Houghton, Samantha K. Brenner, Chin He, Ronald E. Bryan, Joseph E. Heitzberg, Stephanie W. Chow, Amy L. Henkel, Nayeli A. Dalt, Brian S. Hennessy, Meredith E. Glinka, Stephen M. Heron, Leanne E. Hastings, Sunya Y. Ho, Jonathan Hertz, Courtney S. Homer, Mariko L. Jamison, Christopher D. Horner, Isaac L. Jarudi, Ronnie Hodis, Rita Ju, Felicia Hu, Karen M. Keller, Melinda Huang, Martine Lumi, Mimi Huang, Sarah Laszlo, Hugh Huan, Aline Lerner, Sean C. Hung, Todd P. Logan, Annie Pierre Hurd, Michelle S. Machan, Michael W. Ibrahim, Tenley D. McCarg, Emeka B. Ife, Prabhakar S. Mittal, Shinsuke Iwasa, Laura J. Nasuti, Stephen I. Jaffe, Ifama Y. Waneri, Joshua J. Jensen, Ruth M. Pulmutter, Michael S. Jun, Sarah E. Polson, Mark C. Jin, Ann R. Panus, Matthew J. Joing, Kavita S. Ramaswamy, Courtney A. Jones, Erit Rapley, Daniel G. Jones, Sarajni S. Sami, Salim Jones, Caitlin O. Shine, Kwabina Keja Ajiman, Ivana Sturdivant, Patricia C. C. Kao, Elliot G. Williams, Natalie Karpov, Bachelor of Science in Earth, Atmospheric, and Planetary Sciences, Leah E. Hutchinson, Ariel M. Kass, Catherine L. Rickey, Aaron T. Ketchley, Bachelor of Science in Mathematics, Basil Y. Alnafuri, William J. Keevan, Burhanuddin A. Baki, Russell S. Kellner, Ethan S. Brown, Alice Y. Kim, Derek O. Carpenter, Do Kun Kim, Kezia C. Charles, Mark C. Kim, Diana S. Cheng, Jeremy E. Kirsch, Patrick F. Cleary, Satish A. Krishnan, Larissa M. Egloff, Karina Krulig, Kevin E. Emery, Visan Kulvaraporn, Maxwell H. Farrell, David D. Kuo, Ethan M. Fenn, Karen P. Kwan, Evan M. Fink, William W. Kwong, Corey Fusatola, Christina D. Laforeza, John B. Gonzalez, Jr., Louis E. Laguna Apante, Kate G. G. Dusafo, Julius C. Lai, David L. Hardin, 
not so Lam. John J. Huss III. J. F. Landauer. Taku Ida. Jeremy S. Lappin. Aubrey G. Jaffer. Othman Laraki. Mark A. Jury. Derek Lay. Oliver E. Kosit. Bryna L. Lee. Timothy R. Kreider. Christopher T. Lee. Jennifer B. Krishnan. Chul Khan R. Lee. Abraham B. Kunin. David L. Lee. Matthew A. Lehman. D Kenneth C. Lee. Michael J. Lewis. Mark K. Lee. Lee C. Lin. Susan S. Lee. Peyton Lin. Joshua L. Levy. Clayton R. Martin. Samuel Lim. Deepti D. Mehta. Shenkayat Lim. David K. Milovich, Jr. Min Lin. Rita E. Monson. Christine M. Lindsay. Alejandro Morales. Francisco G. Lipke. Russell A. Moriarty. Heitao Lu. Odua Osapenkoi. Jason C. Lu. Raymond Rod. Robin Sabin Low. Alexander D. Skorohad. Kathleen M. Lott. Emma L. Smith. Katerina Lusher. Ken Terraro. Ulugendra Maheshwaran. Abby H. Tingstad. Manav Maheshwari. Malima I. Wolf. Joshua J. Mahoon. Ebenezer K. Wood. Jamie L. Mahoney. Devrin A. Yenner. Joseph A. Mara. Joseph H. Yu. Louise M. Martins. Daniel Zaharapol. Leslie L. McAdams. Bachelor of Science in Mathematics with Computer Science, Jeffrey M. Aristoff. Rahul Mehta. Max Goldman. Shamit G. Mehta. Alexei Golovinsky. David Meredith. Paul E. Gabrau. Christoph Mweni. Gregory W. Griswa. Matthew S. Myers. Julia F. Kane. Andrea O. Migliasi. Alexandra Korlalova. Don E. Miller. Kent A. Ross. Mandy L. Mobley. Brian H. Savory. Juan P. Moreno. Advanced degree diplomas will now be presented to students in the School of Science who have completed the specified degree requirements. Master of Science in Physics, Don Lai Gong. Ryan M. Morrissey. Master of Science in Brain and Cognitive Sciences, Deepa R. Iyengar. Sarah B. Mortensen Shively. Master of Science in Earth and Planetary Sciences, Erwin Mazariko. Nikos Moskos. Miquela C. Vigil. Alvaro G. Mucida. Master of Science in Geosystems, Bradford G. Johnson. Aloshri Mukherjee. Allison J. Klesman. Melody I. Munoz. Ryan S. Merkin. Kimberly R. Murdoch. April A. Russell. William P. Musto. Doctor of Philosophy, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Mesam H. Ailey. Salvador Muzo. Julia A. Baldwin. Anna Nichitelo. Galit Barr. Joseph M. Nelson. Jessica L. Blazik. Keith T. Nichols. Vladimir S. Bozen. Anil Rat Nitisasaroj. Jung Hyung Che. Boris K. Anderson. Yu Han Chen. Mayat H. U. Andrew M. Childs. Romer M. Ortiz. In He Chung. Michael J. Osofsky. Julie M. Claycomb. Manuel E. Ozario. Virel Costenu. Christopher R. Pandolfo. Alexander S. Coventry. Gregory K. Papp. Nuretin Demidovin. Juan M. Parada. Lisa M. Dyson. Niraj V. Karak. Edward F. Early. 
Michael A. Parkins. Sergi Elizalde. Blaine K. Paxton. John M. Frejo. Paichen Peng. Sarah E. Fru. Aaron E. Panini. Ivan K. Furish. Tatiana M. Perez. Nora Gantner. Fernando Perez Gonzalez. Jen Girl. Unil Full. Reiko Henning. Kimberly Pichola. Juliang Hu. Theodore F. Pippenbrook. Myrna Yarosh. Louis Pita. Tesla E. Jeltiba. Cameron S. Price. Jing Zhang. Kartika P. Priharti. Adrian M. Jewett. Dimitri Rabin. Robert J. Kennedy III. Paris A. Rabin. Vishesh Kemani. Venkatesh G. Rao. Michael R. Korn. Matthew T. Richards. Joydip Kundu. Evan C. Richmond. Ladelik J. Latour. Karen Ramon. Aaron E. Leanhart. Alexander I. Rodriguez. Brian H. Lee. Todd A. Rose. Janice Y. Lee. Alejandro Ruiz Esquide. Alina S. Lee. Guatam Sadev. Kerry R. Love. Rodrigo I. Sahuria Garces. Car Carla M. Machado Santos Ferreira de Bao. Michelle Eileen S. Salazar. Mohamed Madian. Barak A. Salomon. Ryan S. McQuaid. Laura M. Saltonstall. Dimitri S. Novikov. Sandro P. Sant Anna. Jefferson A. Parker. Joshua J. Schenker. Sejul J. Patel. Graham M. Skena. Bradley R. Plaster. Stephen C. Shively. Michelle L. Povinelli. Leah M. Schubert. Radush Radochish. Kevin D. Schwain. Kuri Ragnason. Todd C. Schwartz. Drew B. Renner. Caroline A. Seaman. Heather C. Robertson Sears. Aaron K. Selman. David Satter. Matthew M. Seelove. Arvin Sankar. Damian Seltzer. Alexander Seidel. Jose Rodrigo Serrano Mateos. Brian Woody H. Sherman. John P. Sharkey. Rio Shintani. Mark H. Shea. Samia M. Siddiqui. Rachel F. Scheinbein. Linus D. Sun. Fred Chin. Mukun Tatai. Miguel J. C. James K. Thompson. Andrea Silva. W. C. Peter Tsang. Rolando J. Simon. Maria D. Ufret Vincenti. Limor Sine. Michael J. Usher. Bradley W. Smith. Steve J. Yang. Jeffrey W. Smith, Jr. Y. Ling L. Yi. Felipe C. De Suarez. Yasha Yi. Ori Spiegelman. Bilal Zuberi. Amy A. Steele. The Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology offer joint programs of education and research in oceanography and applied ocean science and engineering. John W. Farrington, Vice President for Academic Programs and Dean at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, is here to participate with President Best in awarding the following joint degrees. Doctor of Philosophy, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto, Jeffrey A. Gebby. Justin A. Steinman. Carolyn M. Gramling. David K. Steinmiller. Heather M. Handley. Lauren M. Stewart. Robin K. Kelly. Ryan J. Stratton. Astri J. Kosnes. Lisa P. Stuardi. John D. Tolley. Zhang Soon. Jennifer A. Watson. Michael S. C. Joanna Y. Wilson. Go Tamakoshi. Advanced degree diplomas will now be presented to students in the Whittaker College of Health Sciences and Technology who have completed the specified degree requirements. 
Master of Science in Health Sciences and Technology, Matthew W. Strobeck. Tamer Tamar. Master of Science in Medical Informatics, Samir A. Fade. Saturu Tamiya. David A. Hanauer. Chai Kim Tan. Ashish Nimgonkar. Liu Yen Henry Tan. Robert M. Plavnik. Sorab Tandon. Heta N. Ray. Christopher C. Taylor. Sunil K. Saluja. Bradford L. Terrell. Alicia O. Scott Wright. Torben C. Thoreau. Doctor of Science with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto, Emanuela Binello. Carlos E. Tocantins. Stacy J. Morris. Jill M. Tower. Doctor of Philosophy with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto, Atul Biut. Arturo Trevino. Evan Chen. Irvin H. Tu. Gan D. Dao. Rachel L. Tung. Courtney C. Lane. Alina I. Turian. Faswan Lin. Lucas F. Turton. Jeffrey S. Meltzner. Tanyo N. Vanyo. Eric A. Osborne. Maria D. Valdivizo. Shanmuga Velu D. Soka. Amy S. Valali. Vinshu Shaw. Andreas D. Funsayo. Peter A. Vandre. Yeah, Padma S. Vanka. Carlos A. Vargas. Jeremy C. Wallach. Chi Yu Huang. Sarah D. Weiss. Ryan G. Winner. Mary E. Wheeler. Mark L. Williamson. Jerry A. Wilson. Marcus E. Wilson. Michael Winner. Hester G. Wong. Long Y. Wong. Lucia T. Wu. James E. Wynn II. John Young. Veronica C. Young. Barshak Yildizbarak. Frank Yokoya. Keisuke Yoshizawa. Michael A. Zeppereri. Geraldine M. Zingapan. Scott W. Zinover. Shaheen J. Zojvala. Honggong Zuo. Master of Science in Management. Michael M. Umati. Brett A. Balaz. Michelle E. Bernson. Stephen G. King. Lance P. Macon. Benjamin Baumick. Renato T. Catalan. Carl J. Chen. Kevin K. Chester. Simone Dodd. Benjamin Estevas de Comanges. Yasushi Furiyama. Veronica O. Go. Yoshitaka Hiramoto. Ricard Oge E. Gali. Ya Yasushi Iguchi. Satoru Iwasaki. <laughs> Philippe H. John Reno. Mitsuhiro Kameda. Timothy L. Kelly. Sun Juan Kim. Yasuhiku Kiwuchi. Rintaro Kuribayashi. 
Tay Su Lee. Ko Yu Liu. Rodrigo Lewis. Yuziro Mochizuki. Takesha Motahashi. Chiravanu Nioji. Alexander V. Okunev. Chin An Ong. Christopher O. Oriaki. Boon Chong Hua. David J. Provost. Perinder K. Reddy. Christopher Reichert Basilides. Richard J. Resnick. Akio Saita. Norihitu Shimutsu. John Smetsvig. Titipong Strisamborananot. Wee Bang Khan. Marco M. Tavelli. Paolo G. Vita. Richard G. Webby. Kenji Yamanami. Takashi Yamaoka. Rodan E. Zeda. Master of Science in Operations Research, Corbin G. Kepke. Kendall M. Timmers. Nedibe Varro. Master of Science without specification of field, Y. Wu. Doctor of Philosophy with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto, Matthew J. Bidwell. Kin Y. Chan. Jose R. Carrera. Maria Isabel Fernandez Mateo. Niels O. Fonstad. Mila M. Getmansky. Laura S. Kang. Sarah L. Kaplan. Mahesh Kumar. Shu Li. Victor Martinez de Albenez. Iona, Iona Papas Tikaudi. Sean C. Safford. Melvin Sim. Unsure Sute. Nicolas E. Steeter Moses. Olivier M. Tubia. Andrew G. Van Nordenflight. Congratulations. It's now my pleasure to introduce Paula J. Olszewski, the Chief Marshal, who will greet the graduates. Dr. Olszewski is a member of the class of 1979 and is currently serving as the president of the Association of Alumni and Alumnae of MIT. Paula? Thank you, Dana. It is my great honor to recognize the distinguished members of, di of the 50th year reunion class of 1954. <laughs> and their very special class president and dear mentor of mine, 
Paul Gray. This is the first time in 44 years that Paul has not been on this stage during commencement as a other participating faculty member, chancellor, president, or chairman. Congratulations on your reunion, Paul. Now I invite the class of 1954 to join me in congratulating all of the 2004 graduates in officially welcoming you into the alumni family, your infinite connection to MIT. Thank you, Paula. The 138th commencement exercises of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology are now concluded. A reception will follow uh, on Kresge Oval in the West Campus Plaza. And the audience and graduates are requested to remain at their seats until the stage assembly has recessed. And now, please join the MIT Corollaries in singing the school song. Oh, M-A-S-S-A-C-H-E-R-E-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-